Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. And how's it going, folks? <laughs> What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 361, number 361 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, folks, if you haven't already done so, I would strongly advise you to do so. Follow me on Twitter. I mean, I'm shooting pearls on Twitter, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I'm telling you, the people that are following me on Twitter that are actually waking up with me in the morning and, you know, following the market activity, because, folks, I am tweeting market analysis in real time. And let me tell you, I strongly advise if you want to start entertaining investments, if you want to start thinking about understanding the market, how the markets work, so on and so forth, this is why we brought in the third hour, baby. You understand? And let me tell you, I had countless, countless amounts of people tweeting at me, emailing me, saying, come on, ghost, bring back the markets, baby. Bring back the markets. I want to go ahead and make some money, baby. I want to make some money again here. All right, I remember when I used to listen to True Capitalist Radio back in the old days. You gave great market analysis, and by God, that's what I'm doing, so I'm doing it again. Please follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost is the name to follow on Twitter. Now, folks, my voice is getting a little bit better, to say the least. I want to thank everybody for... Uh, you know, understanding that I had to take a damn Taco Tuesday off, for Christ's sake. Uh, but let's go ahead and get right into the markets, folks. If you were w- watching me on Twitter this morning, uh, I tweeted right before the markets opened up that the Nikkei uh, index out there, the Tokyo Exchange of Japan, uh, closed on the downside. It closed minus 60 points. And uh, once again, that's a good indicator on whether or not you're going to see a down day on the market or not. But as uh, the day went on, and of course the uh, bell rang, and as the day's trading started to go ahead and proceed, we got some economic reports of some quarterly growth, some quarterly growth numbers that came out, which, you know, let's be honest, it's a bunch of bogus, dumbass government figures that, with all due respect, you take them with a grain of salt. But it was just enough, just enough to get this market fueled a little bit. And as that news came out, I said that we were going to start seeing the market go up. And by God, that's exactly what it did, folks. It went up for at least an hour right after that economic uh, quarterly growth number came out. And, folks, as a result of that, you started seeing a volatile, erratic market that it just proves that the investment community, the people that are supposed to be in charge in Wall Street – have no goddamn idea what they're doing. 
They don't have. They don't know their asses from their goddamn assholes or elbows. They don't know crap. All right. They don't know crap. And the reason I say this, folks, is because as I stated, once that uh, quarterly economic data number came out. We started seeing the equities market, the stock markets going up. I mean, take a look at this day's chart on the Dow Jones Industrial S&P 500. I mean, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable helter-skelter type market, completely erratic, no kind of consistency whatsoever, all right? So let's just go ahead and get down to the stock market. It ended up closing on the negative side. Now, let me explain why. You saw the initial investor reaction as it related to that quarterly data number that came out and why the initial reaction of investors was to go ahead and buy into equities because, you know, that's what uh, they're, they're hoping for. They're like, hey, there's a positive number. This means it should be some decent growth in the economy. It means there should be some profitability in the, uh, in the equities as it relates to quarterly profits. But wait. Once the quarterly numbers set in, investors started realizing that, wait a minute, this means that Janet Yellen could potentially just kind of throw out an interest rate hike at any point. Because remember, folks, we reported yesterday that Janet Yellen testified in front of Congress that she does not have a timetable for an interest rate hike. And she is basically tentative on the interest rate hike based upon the economic productivity of America and the growth of a variety of different markets, job markets, the credit market, uh, the, you know, the, the, the retail market, so on and so forth. All right. So as these quarterly growth numbers came out and the initial reaction of the investors was to go into the equities market, right off the bat, investors started thinking, wait a minute, this means that this brings back growth to the economy. This could justify uh, this could justify a means for Janet Yellen to increase these goddamn interest rates. So now you know what the investors did? After about an hour of the rush into the equities market, they went right in and cashed out, and everybody started rallying on the dollar today. And I don't know if you folks saw the rally on the dollar. The dollar is increasing in value because they're starting to realize that if Janet Yellen – pulls the plug and actually raises the interest rate to any capacity, this bull market could go into a free fall at any time. And not just the damn equities market, but the real estate market as well, folks. All right? This interest rate hike, and it's going to be, uh, you know, I know she tried to raise it, what was it, a quarter point or something of that nature, which was a pussy move, no pun intended, yelling. But it was a pussy move. You either go a full point or you don't, all right? Because, you know, whether or not we're going to suffer some economic recourse as it pertains to the interest rate hike, we should have done this a long time ago. There is so much floating outstanding currency that's floating around out here that needs to be recalled. And in my personal opinion, I think that Janet Yellen, based upon the numbers, and this is how the investors are reading this economic data that came out today, all right, they are reading this as a potential increase of the interest rates based on the data. So you saw that in today's markets, folks. You take a look at the chart today for the Dow Jones Industrials, I mean, or, or any of them, any of them. I'm talking uh, the, the chart for uh, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, it shows the same story. It shows up oh, economic numbers. Oh, let's go ahead and put it on the positive side for an hour or two, and then, oh, uh, that's right. This means that there's positive growth in the American economy. That means that Yellen could raise the interest rates, for Christ's sake, man. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and continue going, all right? We've got the Dow Jones Industrials. Even though we saw a push into the green as it related to the initial reaction to the quarterly growth numbers, it was on the downside. And look, I even said in the morning, based upon the Nikkei index closing in Japan, that it was going to be an indication of a down market in the equities. And it ended up finally becoming that because traditional investing, you know, should coincide with what the hell uh, is being applied here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, it seems to me that the investment community has thrown traditional investing out the goddamn window, for Christ's sake, man. 
Anyway, the Dow Jones Industrials is down today 195.79 points, a percentage decrease of 1.07% on the day, closing out the Dow Jones Industrials at 18,143.45 points on the day for the Dow. S&P, the same story. You could take a look at the charts. I mean, the charts look identical for all these indexes. All right? Take a look at them for yourself. Anyway, very helter-skelter. You can tell it's a day trader's market. And, you know, this is a shame, folks. I think that everybody that has the capability of whether having a 1000 or $2,000 saved up should be able to enter the market via a brokerage firm and be able to day trade, which means you are trading on a frequent basis. Because, folks, thanks to Mr. Yes, We Can, Barack Obama, and the Democrats, the, they blame the individual investor for the 2008 crash. And as a result, if you wanted to partake in day trading in today's economic climate, you are legally, legally supposed to have at least $20,000 in your brokerage account so that you can legally day trade in the United States of America. Now, I would strongly advise everybody that's on the Trump train to please email Donald Trump, Facebook Donald Trump, tweet at Donald Trump and say, look, we would like for you to take away this law so that individual Americans, working Americans, can go into this highly volatile stock market so they can participate in high-frequency day trading in whatever amount of capital that they're initiating into the market, be able to obtain this liquidity, because, folks, there is massive amounts of liquid in this market, especially as it pertains to day trading. Take a look at all the peaks and valleys in this market today. I mean, I'm serious. You, I mean, there is lots of liquid to be made. Now, for you folks that are kind of getting discombobulated on what I'm saying, what I'm saying is it is illegal, for instance, if you wanted to buy a stock in the morning and you knew that based upon, you know, last quarter's earnings and based upon consumer demand on what you've seen, and let's say you're buying a retail stock for this case, you're seeing a lot of people going into this retailer. You know that before the earnings are released for that quarter, you know that it's going to be positive. And in the morning, you decide, look, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to put up 1,000 a, a, a shares of this. I'm going, to, I'm going to hold it until earnings. And when earnings comes out uh, and it, they show positive numbers, which you're anticipating, you see, that's what makes the whole game of capitalism, baby. When the earnings come out and they are positive, you get whatever the increase of that stock is from what you bought it for. Because, folks, investors go right in and follow the profit. I mean, one of the key ways to get some easy liquid is to, you know, do your due diligence and do your research on your companies. But if you can do that research and anticipate that a certain company is going to either beat the street's expectations or uh, at least meet the street's expectations based upon the current stock market climate, you could potentially see increases into uh, 50 cent, a dollar, two dollar, depending on the market cap of the stock, three or four dollar increases within one day. All right? Within one day. So if you have a thousand shares, and, you know, you bought it two hours prior to the earnings being released, and then that two hours, the earnings are released, they're positive, the investors love it, they go after that stock, and the stock increases 2 or $3 from where you bought it because you anticipated a positive earnings here, all right, then that means that you get a dollar for every stock of the 1,000 shares that you have for that particular company. So if it goes up three bucks, that's $3,000 that's in your pocket for two, three hours of work. You understand? I'm not joking around. Or if you could only buy 100 shares, you know, let's say you don't have that much money. If you bought 100 shares, that's 300 bucks on a couple of hours of work. That's what I talk about when I say liquidity. That's liquid. That's liquid money that you just pulled out of the market and put it right into your pocket. 
You see, every American should be able to participate in day trading and high frequency trading because if you if, if we were able to if, if individuals i'm talking like the average everyday worker i'm talking the average everyday person if they were at table to pool their money together a thousand dollars two thousand dollars they would be able to go and actually obtain this liquid and be able to utilize this as a means of income in this precarious economy that we now live in very precarious economy that we now live in, for Christ's sake, man. Anyway, I want to thank people that are tweeting at me. Look, I am completely unaware. I just, obviously, I have more than 25000 in my damn uh, uh, means of, of trading. But uh, apparently, the law is you have to have $25,000 to day trade. And if you don't have 25000 you are only allowed four trades in a five-day period without being classified as a day trader. And from what I understand is that people that are exceeding this four trades in a five-day period, they actually have their accounts frozen. You heard the speech. But behind the glitter lies this stark truth. In Hillary Clinton's America, things get worse. Under her dishonest plan, taxes keep rising, terrorism spreads. Washington insiders remain in control. Americans losing their jobs, homes, and hope. In Donald Trump's America, people are put back to work. Our families are safe. The American dream achievable again. Change that makes America great again. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. All right? They, they actually have their accounts frozen. So that's why I'm trying to tell people that there's money to be had out there. I'm serious. I mean, if you were able to go and put $1,000 into a brokerage account and be able to anticipate, do your research, do your due diligence, and be able to buy a stock, all right, prior to earnings, or it doesn't even have to be that play. It could be IPOs. That's another play that is very, very easy liquid for you people that are unaware of what IPOs are. It is an, it is an initial public offering. It is when a stock first goes public and on sale on the exchange. Now, depending on the company, you have to also do your due dil diligence and understand how much, uh, uh, yeah, how many shares they're going to put on the market, how much they're asking for, uh, wh what are the fundamentals, the business model, so on and so forth. But that's another play that you can make serious capital on. I mean, I'm just saying that there should be no reason why everyday American people that can just, you know, scrape up a thousand, two thousand dollars, why they cannot go and day trade. This is a penalizing law against the people. Everybody should be able to go out and participate in day trading. The liquid is there. I'm telling you how it is. I'm telling you how easy it is to make money in this crap. Now, how you pay taxes on that, that's a whole other show. You gotta get tax professionals and tax attorneys and that sort of thing. But the money is there. The money is there. Why the government is preventing the American people from doing it, I have no goddamn idea. All right? No goddamn idea. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I didn't mean to get on that soliloquy, folks, but I, I definitely do believe that that law needs to be completely just erased from the books. And I'm sure the brokerage firms would appreciate it as well. Anyway, let me get to the S&P 500 and the other markets and uh, the commodities, and then we're going to go ahead and get to Twitter shout-outs. Anyway, the S&P, once again, the same helter-skelter, erratic volatility. Definitely a day trader's market here. All right, S&P is down 20.24 points, a percentage decrease of 0.93% on the day, closing out the S&P at 2,151.13 points for the S&P 500. I'm actually rather surprised that the S&P 500 is at 21.5. But once again, uh, there's so much money that has been printed out thanks to the Federal Reserve and low interest rates and government spending that people don't know where to put their money. I'm telling you this right now. They do not know where to put their goddamn money. That's why you have a ballooned uh, a stock market at 18,000 Dow at at 21.5 S&P 5,000 plus Nasdaq. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. 
But you see, there's so much money that has been printed out, and people that are obtaining it, what what are they going to do with it? They can't put it in their mattress because it, it defeats the purpose. I mean, the rate of inflation, literally you're losing money because our government continues to spend money and the Federal Reserve continues to print money. The rate of inflation, because that's what happens when they continue to print money, inflation happens. So go ahead and read that up. I don't have time to be uh, giving you vocabulary definitions. But if they were to just put that in their mattress, they're losing money by the rate of inflation every year just by saving it in their goddamn mattress. I'm not joking around. So where are, they, where are the people going to save their money? They're going to put it in stocks. They're going to put it in real estate. They're going to put it in assets. And that's why I'm saying, folks, we are witnessing an asset bubble here, right? I'm serious. We are witnessing an asset bubble. And, I, I mean, I, I, that's why I'm, I'm pretty much sitting on liquid here, folks. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Cash is going to be king when the crash happens. And, of course, traditional uh, safe assets like gold and silver are always going to be the safe havens when we start seeing this crash, and not just the stock market, but the real estate market as well, all right? Anyway, let's go to the NASDAQ, all right? The NASDAQ is down today 49.39 points, a percentage decrease of 0.93% on the day, closing out the NASDAQ at 5,269.16 points for the NASDAQ composite. And you take a look at the charts of all three major indexes in America, folks, it's uncanny. It's uncanny the similarities in which this helter-skelter erratic volatility is like in unison. And all these indexes, all of them, that just goes to show you that there's not that many people left in the market. It's just nothing but a bunch of goddamn uh, uh, investment firms and hedge fund managers and mutual fund managers and all that crap. All right, so this uh, just proves it. Just take a look at the chart today, if you don't believe me. Of all three indexes, almost uncanny identical, which should not ever be in a supposed uh, free, market, free market stock market. Excuse me. Jesus Christ. Good Lord. Anyway, let's get to the commodities, folks, all right? Seriously, let's, uh, let's get to the commodities here because, look, uh, you know, because we had a rally in the dollar, not only did we see a decrease in the equities, we also saw decreases in commodities because that's what happens, folks, all right? When the dollar increases in value, all right, uh, the uh, commodities decrease, equities decrease because uh, that's how it works. If the dollar loses value, that's when you start seeing an increase in commodities, you see an increase in equities, bonds, these types of things because people aren't cashing out. They don't want to hold liquid. That's what that's what cash is. That's what cashing out is. That's what the run on the dollar is. They're cashing out. They're, they're holding American dollars. All right? And because we're having a rally on the dollar today, it's, it's just decreasing everything from equities to commodities. But one thing that didn't was the energy market, uh, with, the exception of a few, uh, with, the, with the exception of a few commodities in that sector, uh, energy was probably a fairly decent winner, and I was rather surprised, even though uh, I don't think that these gains were dramatic in any regard as it relates to today's uh, crude uh, uh, green numbers. But in essence, I do, or, and I am surprised that we didn't see enough retention within this uh, crude sector. Because remember, I mean, we were up five and a half, six percent. In the crude market yesterday, I was surprised that we're not seeing people taking profits from that particular uh, increase uh, in one day, 5 or 6% cash out, and then parlay that back into the dollar rally or bottom feed on some of these decreases in equities or commodities itself. But with that being said, all right, energy did do fairly well. All right, let's get to the crude prices. WTI sweet crude today was up 67 cents, a percentage increase of 1.42% on the day. Not bad. That's like 7%, close to 7% on the day for WTI, or excuse me, uh, close to 7% for the two-day, for the past two days, close to 7% increase for WTI sweet crude. Not damn bad if you'd have listened to yours truly on Monday, all right? You'd have been making, you'd have been, you'd have been making 7% on your money in a goddamn week. Good God. 
All right. Anyway, we've got Brent. Oh yeah, let, let me let me move on with the the, the WTI. WTI once again 1.42 percent increase on the day, closing out WTI at forty seven dollars seventy two cents per barrel of WTI sweet crude oil. Now let's get to Brent crude, folks. Brent crude is up forty three cents, a percentage increase of 0.88 percent, closing out Brent crude at forty nine dollars and twelve cents per barrel. Of Brent crude oil, we did see some pullbacks in certain sector, certain commodities in the energy sector. Gasoline was down 0.74 percent. Natural gas was also down today, 1.20 percent for natural gas. And folks, what have I been telling you about this heating oil play since Monday? All right, I mean, I think we saw uh, was it a two and a half percent increase on Monday? I think that on Tuesday was also another. One and a half percent. We saw another one and a quarter, one and a half percent yesterday. Today, folks, heating oil is up 1.14 percent. All right. So that's why I'm saying these plays are everywhere. That's why I try to do the markets and let everybody know that hey, you want some money. All right. You want to you want to get in. You want to become a capitalist. I'm telling you these plays. I'm telling you that hey, here's an option. There's an option. I mean, they're not going to teach you this crap in school, folks, all right? What I am teaching you here is invaluable information, all right? And I hope that you're taking advantage, and I hope that you're taking goddamn notes. And once again, folks, if you weren't here on Monday, I said when I brought back the first-hour markets was that heating oil is your classic play right before the cold front comes in in the Midwest and in the East Coast because for the most part – Heating oil is the basis of the way folks heat their homes in the Midwest and the North and the Northeast and the East Coast. Uh, So this is a very hot commodity, literally and figuratively, every winter, and the price always goes up around this time. So it's always a pretty good play. I'm not trying to say that heating oil is not going to continuously be a good play. As I've stated uh, there's a lot of speculation through a lot of different sources that this, this is going to be a very harsh winter. And if it's a harsh winter, not only is heating oil going to be a play, uh, but a lot of different commodities are also going to p- be a play as well. So let me continue going on, folks. All right. Uh, once again, heating oil up 1.14% on the day today. Let's get to the metals, shall we? The metals. Let's get to the metals. We've got gold, you know, falling flat today. Very, very weird helter-skelter market in gold as well, folks. I mean, look at that chart. Unbelievable. I don't like these charts that are just kind of wavy gravy, man. I don't like that crap. It shows an insecurity within the investment community. It shows that they don't know what the hell's going on. It's what it shows me. When I read it, when when I look at these charts, that's what it says to me, all right? I mean... The gold and silver chart almost look almost identical as well. Almost. I mean, it's just it's just too uncanny. It, it, it's just just it's. Uh. Anyway, we've got gold uh, down today, twenty cents, a percentage decrease of point zero two percent, closing out gold at one thousand three hundred and twenty three dollars and fifty cents per troy ounce of gold. All right. Anyway, let's go to silver, shall we? Silver was up a nickel, all right? That's a percentage increase of 0.26% on the day, closing out silver at $19.17 per troy ounce of silver. Uh, We saw a, what was it, a 1% or 2% increase in copper yesterday, almost 2% increase in copper. Copper is leveling off. It's only up 0.05%. And uh, platinum, for all you folks that are getting into those high-end metals, uh, it was falling flat today. It was only a uh, 0.03% on the day. Now let's get to the agriculture, shall we? Now you're seeing a lot of red in the agriculture sector because you're seeing a lot of pop profits being pulled because of this dollar rally. And as I stated, when the rally of the dollar ever happens, be prepared for a, 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 a contraction in the equities and even in the commodities market. You're going to see down all together because, hey, the dollar is, is worth something. Investors are going to go and they want to hold on to the dollar as it's rising, and uh, it goes into the, the whole currency trading thing. I don't really want to discuss that, but uh, if you want to 
do more research on that. I strongly advise you to uh, do that on your own, okay? Let's go into the agriculture here. All right, mostly in the red here. Now, let me continue going and start off by corn. Corn is flat, no change today, 0% increase or decrease. Now, as for wheat, wheat, you're seeing investors prepping themselves for this potential pop that should happen. I mean, look, all the analysts within the uh, commodity sector that cover this particular commodity are, are anticipating a decrease in supply. We're already seeing increases in demand as it relates to wheat. And I think that you have a lot of investors. It's a very weird, uh, very weird chart today. Very weird chart. And remember, there's not too many people that are playing the commodities market, like actually buying and selling these contracts. And for you folks that are unaware on how commodities are actually traded, uh, what people are doing, you know, just for just to make a long story short, an investor is buying a wheat contract, all right, a wheat contract that is expected to be delivered on a given time. Now, these contracts end December 2016, so these uh, contracts that are being traded are being traded for December 2016. Now, what investors do is they buy that contract for wheat or whatever commodity and hold that contract until the price of the commodity rises higher or if by some chance it goes lower and they want to dump the son of a bitch. All right? Now, they can't hold on to that contract too long because it ends. And if you hold on to a commodities contract all the way into the end, well, you better make the arrangements for it to be delivered somewhere because that damn commodity is now yours all right <laughs> i'm serious that's how the commodities game works now i am not telling people to invest uh, in this capacity as a matter of fact you have to i mean to, to trade commodities you have to have hundreds of thousands uh minimum in my personal opinion for it to be even majorly profitable but when it's profitable you can make millions of dollars i've known some people that are commodities traders uh that make uh, you know serious money you know so uh i make plays on commodities based on etfs based on uh, stock plays uh you know those types of capacities uh you know i i i don't play options i know i per i possibly could uh, I don't like that financial instrument. Uh, you know, there, there's there's a variety of different instruments you can play in an attempt to capitalize on an increase in any one of these commodities. I'm serious. I mean, ETFs are the easiest one because you can get in and get out. Like, let's say you anticipate an increase, like I'm anticipating an increase in wheat, and this is why I'm getting into this. Uh, you buy an ETF. Tomorrow, the USDA... The, the Department of Agriculture is going to release numbers, all right, starting at 8.30 a.m. and is going to continue releasing numbers at 12 p.m. And I think the last numbers for tomorrow they're going to release at 2 p.m. These are numbers based upon uh, the stock supply of grains. Uh, I believe it's of uh, grains. And I believe it. I think it's just of grains. Oh, yeah, and it's also of livestock, grains and livestock. And these numbers are basically going to fuel or deflate any rallies in any of these damn commodities, all right? So literally tomorrow's USDA uh, report, it's much like Trading Places, folks. Have you ever seen the movie Trading Places? Uh, this is going to tell whether or not this wheat uh, rally. And look, just based upon the chart on wheat, I mean, it's at like a three- or four-year low, for heaven's sake. I mean, there's nowhere to go but up, you know, and if there happens to be a supply situation, I think that it's going to take off, so in my view, I'm bullish on wheat, I know there's people within the capitalist army that are taking this play, uh, I wish you well, and I wish you luck, and I hope that we're uh, some major winners on this particular play, anyway, wheat today is down 1.05%, uh, but let me tell you, I, I think that there's a play there. And I also said yesterday there's going to be a possible play on oats. Oats have been going up gradually 1% or 2% every day this week. Oats, again, is up 1.15%. Uh, 
Uh, once again, I also think, folks, uh, I've been reading reports out of different rice producers uh, that are basically having a little bit of uh, a little bit of problem with their rice production. Uh, rains in Asia. Uh, there's a couple of other reports that uh, a lot of rice producers are, you know, their harvests have been, you know, mal- maligned with all kinds of different natural disasters. So I'm also looking for rice in this report tomorrow uh, to raise up, in my personal opinion. I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I just, in my personal opinion, I, I feel it. You know what I mean? I, I feel it, all right? Let me go ahead and continue going. Uh, Rice is up today, 0.31%. Now, soybean and soybean oil have been raising here, and we've been seeing it steady. Now, the USDA did release a report today. The report was the exports, the amount of exports for grains out here. And uh, there is a substantial amount of soybean being bought by, uh, I believe it's China, and I believe uh, a couple of other countries that is fueling this particular rally in soybean and soybean oil. Now, soybean is, you know, a little flat today. Uh, The chart on that was up all day up until the end of the day's trading. It is up 0.50%. Soybean oil, all right, up 1.37% on the day. And I think that was fueled on the uh, numbers that came out today on the exports of this particular commodity. All right, you can read that at USDA.gov, I believe. Canola, all right, it is up uh, 0.19%, pretty flat. Now, let's continue on. Now, nothing but red in the softs, folks. I mean, good God. Uh, Cocoa, which is the uh, plant that is the base for chocolate, it had been rallying for the past couple of weeks. Uh, People were speculating that, you know, it could go so high that it could potentially affect the holiday season. We're seeing major retraction today, possibly on the dollar rally, all right? It is down 3.43% on the day. That's, that's harsh. 3.43% decrease on the day for cocoa. We've got coffee. And, and folks, it is National Coffee Day. You would think that that would somehow fuel a little bit of green in the coffee commodity. Nope, not at all, all right? Coffee is down 1.93% on the day, all right? Sugar! Sugar, on the other hand, folks, we have been seeing increases on sugar. It is at a four-year high. A four-year high. I was waiting for some retraction on this particular commodity. It has finally happened today. It is down 1.81% on the day. Orange juice. We've been seeing a lot of increases in orange juice, folks. All right? And it's because, once again, the cold weather is coming in. Uh, People are starting to consume this. Uh, They're starting to consume this for the vitamin C jolt so that they can prevent themselves from catching any of these ailments that are so pesky around this time. Uh, But you could tell on on this dollar rally, they're cashing out some of those profits. Uh, Orange juice is also down 1.52% on the day. Cotton. Cotton is also down 1.10% on the day. The only thing that was increased today in the soft sector, folks, was lumber. Lumber was up today 1.38% on the day. Unbelievable. All right, everything in the soft sector was literally down except for lumber. I have no idea what the hell that's about. I have no goddamn idea. I'm speculating that we saw a decrease. I think there were some numbers that came out earlier this week that new homes are actually decreasing in consumption, but homes that have already been pre-built of already pre-built homes are still rallying. They're still being bought. Uh, they're still being purchased. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming that is the reason for this particular goddamn uh, uh, rally in lumber, because if there's a rally in the dollar, then that means that people are going to continue to buy real estate, because if there is no interest rate hike and the dollar is increased in value, then that means that the real estate prices should see a little bit of receding here in the next couple of weeks. And as a result, uh, you could potentially see some more buying from folks that could potentially be what? Remodels, you know, re- rebuilding, so on and so forth. So I have, I have no idea. Anyway, let me continue going here. We got rubber. Rubber is down today 
1.21%. I know that not too many people use those nowadays, so I can see that why wow, that's down. Ethanol is also down 1.54%. And let's get to livestock, shall we? Now, look, tomorrow's USDA report is also going to give numbers, all right, is also going to give numbers on the uh, livestock, the head count, the slaughter count. Uh, it's going to show how much is available for consumption. Uh, you take these numbers and you base that on demand. You base that on exports. You know what I'm saying? So that's all there is to it, for Christ's sake, man. All right? I personally believe that there's going to also be a decent run here in the next month or two heading into the holidays on lean hogs. All right? Lean hogs, folks. I'm not kidding around. Uh, you want to entertain this particular play out here because we've been seeing some decreases in lean hogs. And to be honest with you, I think there's going to be a supply problem because processors have cut back on their processing capability based upon uh, the past few quarters' lack of demand. And because we're heading into the holiday season, and not to mention, folks, that October is, uh, is National Pork Month, all right? It's National Pork Month. I, I, I see nothing but bullish uh, activity for lean hogs. Now, let me get through these uh, livestock, and we'll get to the rest of the broadcast here. Live cattle is down today, folks, 0.48% on the day. There may be a small rally in live cattle tomorrow, folks. I mean, I've been seeing nothing but negative numbers in live cattle. I've been reading that, uh, you know, and I've been seeing it personally. Uh, meat prices, beef prices have gone down. I mean, they're they literally giving meat away, beef away out here. Nobody's consuming it. You're seeing a decrease in demand. And if there's a decrease in demand, you're going to have a lot of these producers of uh, livestock not want to slaughter so many heads and probably save them for the next quarter. So in my personal opinion, I think that uh, uh, live cattle is also a small rally potential in my personal opinion. We've seen nothing but negative numbers out of live cattle. Uh, so we shall see how that works. But I am definitely bullish on, on uh, lean hogs, definitely. Anyway, live cattle is down today, 0.48% decrease on the day. Cattle feeder is also down today, folks, 0.41% on the day. And let me tell you, anytime you see an increase in cattle feeder, and how you're going to see an increase is you're going to take a look at those grain prices. Do you ever see those grain prices going up, whether it's wheat, corn, or any of these other components to cattle feeder? You know that when corn and wheat are going up, that cattle feeder is going to go up. And if cattle feeder is going to go up, well, then live cattle is going to go up. You see how economics works, baby? Huh? You see how it works? <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, once again, cattle feeder is down, though, 0.41%. And lean hogs, folks, up modestly today, very modestly, 0.59% increase on the day. And that, my friends, is the markets for your ass, all right? <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, folks, and look, I'm, I'm trying to tell you this, all right? All right, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you how to make money, all right? I've been trying to tell you folks how to make money, how to make capital, baby. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm shooting pearls to you people, and it's up to you to catch them, put them in your pocket, and make some serious money out of it. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, give me a freaking break. I'm serious. I mean, give me a damn break, for Christ's sake, man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and drink today. Give me a goddamn more beer, for Christ's sake. That's what we want here, for Christ's sake. More beer. Jesus Christ, just get some more beer going on. Hey, man, I'm capitalizing here, baby. I mean, I'm capitalizing. As you can see, folks, I know there's a lot of troll terrorists and cyber vermin on Twitter flapping their damn Pop-Tart stained fingers on the keyboard, talking a bunch of garbage, saying, I'm bored. I don't like this, ghost. Well, you know what? Tough titty, ass crack, all right? Tough titty. All right? Because I, as far as I'm concerned, what I'm doing here is providing you stupid numbnuts a service. What I'm doing is providing, I would say, millions of dollars of information for you people to grasp on on and try to utilize to make your life better, to make you a capitalist, to make you understand how all this runs, how this damn economy works, 
how everything goes, for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious, for Christ's sake. I mean, I'm sitting here showing and telling you people how to make money, and it's up to you whether you want to do it or not, all right? Serious, it's up to you if you want to do it or not. And if you don't want to do it, well, then don't piss and moan when one day you're shining capitalist shoes. You understand that, boy? Don't be pissing and moaning when you're having to be on your goddamn knees and shining the shoes of capitalists, you sorry sacks of four flush and crap. You understand that? You understand that? Son of a bitch. Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and uh, move on here to the rest of the broadcast. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get freaking Twitter shout-outs over with so that you stupid troll terrorists and cyber vermin can sit here. I'm bored. <laughs> you know what? You're bored. Get out of here. How about that, you stupid sorry sack of crap? What makes you think that I even want you here, huh? Uh, it's obvious you're a lost cause, you're an imbecilic moron, you refuse to, you know, understand, comprehend, or cognitively interpret the knowledge that I'm giving to you stupid people, but instead you want, no, I want to make fan art, I want to make little art pillows of you, and I, I want to do this because I'm an insignificant, stupid little nothing, that's right, my life sucks. And this is what I do. And instead of actually making my life worth the crap, I'm just going to make my insignificant, half a tarred life even that much more insignificant and continue to be like, ah, look at me, I'm a troll. <laughs> Stupid, dumb, imbecilic morons, man. Get out of here. Get them out. I don't care if you listen or not. Get out. Get out of here think I care if a bunch of troll terrorists and cyber vermin listen. I don't give a crap. Get out! Get the hell out! Anyway, let me let me calm my ass down here. Let's go ahead and get to some Twitter shout-outs. And look, it may not even be many of them, because I can already tell these damn troll terrorists and cyber vermin you know, they're, they're really, like, getting off on the fact that, oh, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this name, and, ha, oh, that name is me. That, I, even though I'm an insignificant little nothing pissant that still lives with Mammy and ha has no way to take care of myself, that was me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, stupid morons. Anyway, I'm only going to take a couple of these, and then I'm going to move on, for Christ's sake. What's going on to the chefist? How you doing? That's a true capitalist right there. What's going on to Frosty, man? It's, I'm sorry to hear it, man. I hope you keep your head up. Let me know what's going on here, all right? Who else do we got going on over here? We got, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we've got uh, 5,000 engineer fans. Uh, shut up! Oh, 50,000. 50, I, I, you know what? I know you're BSing now. All right? I know you idiots are BS and not 50,000 engineer fans. Shut up. All right? Just shut your stupid, stinking, smelly holes. All right? Good God. Who else do we have going on over here? We got the Brony Network in the house. We got Remington in the house. How you doing? Base Loller. All right? Templeton bit my tie. Shut up, you idiot. We got Capitalist Cush in the house. Jersey Train Simulator. Look, that's... Look. You see, this is why I didn't even want to bring up this subject before the damn uh, Twitter shout-outs, because I knew, I knew you damn troll terrorists were going to make fun of the situation, all right? Now, for you folks that are unaware, all right, there was a train accident, or was it an accident? Who knows? That happened in Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, killed, one pe uh, killed one person, uh, I believe reports say, uh, injured over 100 people. Now, I strongly advise everybody to hold their judgments on whether or not this is an accident or not, because it seems pretty goddamn deliberate to me. And I'd like to know the name of the engineer. No pun intended, engineer. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about another engineer, right? I'd like to know the name of the engineer of that particular train and whether or not it was a a la snack bar or something of that capacity, or the religion of peace or something of that nature, right? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. 
Anyway, we got Czech capitalists in the house. We got private, uh, uh, was it Fried Helm Winter? What's going on? We got uh, John S.K., the deplorable Choco, all right? Uh, Thomas won't stop an engine. That, shut up. Just shut up, man. I can beat Ghost. Yeah, right. You come over here to freaking San Antonio. I'm in San Antonio now, boy. All right? You want to meet me somewhere? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you where you can meet me. All right? Where was I at here that looks like a very nice area of town that you people can meet me at? How about uh, anywhere in the west side of San Antonio? You meet me anywhere out there. Walk around out there for a little bit. All right? And, 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 and try to act like troll terrorists out there and see how you... Or you know what? Better yet, even the east side. You see, that's the funny part about San Antonio. The west side, Mexican barrio, okay? The east side, black ghetto, all right? And the south side is like literally little Mexico. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not joking around, all right? Anyway, look, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, have to, I have to say the truth. I'm sorry. Anyway, we got Dr. Bristle. We got iBoom7. Whatever the hell that's supposed to ah, Jesus Christ. We got Jimmy Capitalist in the house. What's going on, Jimmy? How you doing? And in the wizard in the place. Jesus Christ. Ghost six month sentence. That's not funny, ass crack. Seriously, all right? That's not funny. That's not funny. You heard the speech. But behind the glitter lies this stark truth. In Hillary Clinton's America, things get worse. Under her dishonest plan, taxes keep rising, terrorism spreads. Washington insiders remain in control. Americans losing their jobs, homes, and hope. In Donald Trump's America, people are put back to work. Our families are safe. The American dream achievable again. Change that makes America great again. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Jesus Christ, who else do we have here? This is the kind of crap I get for Twitter shoutouts, folks. This is it right here. This is what I get. Jesus Christ. We got the green leader in the house, the key stoner in the place, Cam the man in the house. How you doing, man? Politics Pepe. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, I just, just shut a Ghost drives a Model T. What the hell are you? Shut up! Jesus Christ. Should I buy wheat? I said I'm bullish on wheat, all right? You should, you know, I don't know. I mean, the report comes out pretty early tomorrow. We shall see. We got Vetifora Moors in the house. How you doing, man? Body pillows and pampers. Oh, Jesus, just shut up, all right? Engineer one, Hoboken zero. You son of a... God damn it! God damn it! You see, I... I God damn it! I knew you sons of bitches were going to do some garbage like this, man. I knew it. I knew it, man. And look, here's another one. Engineer train wreck. I mean, stop it. Just stop. It's too soon, man. It's too soon. It's too goddamn soon, man. It's too soon for this stuff, man. Look, somebody's putting here market snore fest. You want to know why it's a snore fest for you there, you fat pot-bellied piece of crap? It's because you're a pathetically anal loser that isn't going to accomplish a goddamn thing. And you're going to expect your disgusting, despicable whorebag mother or your cuckold connoisseur father to take care of your half a tarred ass. That's why you think the markets are a snooze fest or a snore fest, you sorry sack of trash. All right? Seriously, you're losers. All right, just get it through your head. You're losers. Jesus Christ. Who else do we have here, for Christ's sake, man? A bunch of freaking half a tards is what we have here. Jesus Christ. My wife says moo, you asshole. Huh? She's, you know, and that's a stupid little brony right You know, I'm getting sick and tired of you bronies. You understand that? I'm serious. I'm getting sick and tired of you stupid little bronies. Because let me tell you something right now, you little pipsqueak, little little half a femi fruit bags. All right? 
If you were to ever think that you could tell me something like that in my face, I would break your glasses and shove them down your throat! Stupid dumbass, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Who else do we have, for Christ's sake, man? NFL star Templeton. What the hell does that mean? Jesus Christ, man. Thomas Jersey Engine. Look, uh, enough, all right? Seriously, enough of that crap. Shut up! Shut up! Look at this. Last train to Hoboken. Enough! Enough of that crap! Jesus Christ! You sick, twisted pricks! Enough of that... Stop, man! Enough of that crap! I'm telling you, you guys... You... I'm telling you, you damn... You, 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 you troll terrorists, you know, you talk a big game online, boy. I'm telling you this right now. I mean, give me, give me that back. Give me that back. Let me tell you something, you scumbags. Each and every one of you troll terrorists, I guarantee you, you've never taken an ass beating. And I tell you, I think that's what every male needs. Every male needs a good goddamn humbling ass beating. Because after they take a good beating, that's when they're like, oh, man, uh, I better not do that again. I, I better not, you know, be trolling and making sure I'm going to get caught because I'm going to get my ass kicked. I think, you know, seriously, I think everybody needs a good goddamn kick in the goddamn ass. I'm serious. A couple of slaps up there inside their fat, jelly-ass, pimpled, pop-tart-eating faces. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn right, boy. Stupid troll terrorist scum, for Christ's sake, man. I'd, I'd, I'd be more than happy to beat you know, beat the beat Jesus out of every one of you like I was your damn daddy. As a matter of fact, give me... Give me my belt. Give me, give me, give me my damn belt. You see, you troll terrorists and cyber vermin are single whore mother larva. And you need to get that through your head. It's your dirty dish rag whore mother that shitted you out and turned you in to no personality, dickless, stupid, imbecilic, fat jelly ass, anime cartoon fetish loving pieces of crap. All right? And all you need is a good ass beating. All you need is a good ass beating, for Christ's sake, from a daddy that your stupid, dumb, femmy ass has never had there, boy. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! i take you in that damn woodshed, boy, and beat you like I was your daddy, boy. Yeah! Yeah! Take that, fruit bowl! I ain't made a man of you yet, boy. Yeah! Ha! Ah! You're goddamn right, you son of a bitch. All right? Nothing but a bunch of goddamn single mother larva. Single whore mother larva. As a matter of fact, bring your whore mother. Bring your single whore mother into the woodshed, will you too, boy? She needs a little bit of... Yeah! Yeah! Keep your legs closed, bro. I get... Yeah! Yeah! Put a damn cork in it or a sponge in it, get... Yeah! Yeah! Goddamn son of a bitch. Single dish rag whore mothers. I'm sick of them, man. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them all. Jesus Christ, man. I'm sick of them all. I'm serious. I'm sick of them all. Give me my beer. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake, son of a bitch. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, man. Let me tell you something. That's what you goddamn troll terrorists and cyber vermin need, boy. You understand that? that? That's what you goddamn need. I guarantee it, boy. Let me tell you something. That's, that's what you need. You need a good ass beating. Each and every one of you troll terrorists, you need a goddamn ass whooped. All right? Anyway, what's going on to... Uh, Sergeant Yoda, he's in the house. What's going on to Blood Fart? How you doing, Blood Fart? Jesus Christ, who the hell else do we got here? I'm sick and tired of this crap, man. I'm sitting over here, I'm shooting pearls to you people, and you don't even care. Jesus Christ, we got the Tard crew in the house. Jesus Christ, Ghostler Youth Boy Scouts. Jeez, shut up, man. 
Just shut up. Oh, my God. We got nutty stool sample. Jesus Christ. We got multi-track drifting. Whatever the hell. Oh, shut up about the goddamn crash already, man. Shut up. Jesus Christ, man. Novelty best in the house. Trolls 361, Ghost Zero. Yeah, right. Are you kidding me? I'm getting the best out of each and every one of you trolls, boy. You want to know why? Because you trolls, you thought you were going to get one over on me, right? I'm uh, trying to pit me and my engineer against each other. How did that work out for you, huh, trolls? Huh? How did that work out for you, huh? It didn't work out at all, did it there, you stupid, dumb, digital scum? Huh? You freaking digital aids of the Internet? Huh? It didn't work out for you there, did it there, boy, huh? It didn't work out. This is my show. I'm the talent, boy. I'm the talent. Son of a bitch. Anyway, who else do we got going on here? We got, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Ghostler's gas bill. Man, you guys, uh, you know, I'm, I... I mean, well, how am I supposed to react to this crap, man? Jesus Christ. We got train body pillow. That's great. Hoboken got railed. You know, I'm not I'm not doing with it. Engineer one, Hoboken zero. You know, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this crap. I'm not letting you idiots do this anymore. I've, I've had enough of this crap, man. I'm serious. I've had enough. Shut up your ass. You people do not have a soul. I can't believe you people, man. I cannot believe you freaking stupid scumbags, man. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic, man. That's it. This is why we can't have nice things, folks, all right? I'm not I'm not doing any more Twitter shout-outs, for Christ's sake. Anyway, we're now into the second hour of the True Capitalist radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire. I don't know why. You idiots are just going to get more trolls. I shouldn't even be telling you people to do this because, I mean, the more and more I'm noticing you morons spread it around like wildfire, you're putting it in all these ridiculous, disgusting, filthy troll forums and all I'm getting is a bunch of damn fat jelly ass, uh, pocket pool playing, cartoon fetish man children coming up to my broadcast trying to besmirch the show, and I really don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate it one bit, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, if you haven't already done so, please bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Show. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Every one of my episodes is there to download absolutely free. So if you're ever bored and you want to catch up on the show, there's over 1,300 hours of content that is highly unappreciated by a lot of these damn troll terrorists and cyber vermin that don't understand that I don't have to be here. You understand that? I don't have to be here. Jesus Christ. I don't have to be here. You son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Anyway, look, let me continue going, folks, all right? Uh, I was getting over the markets here. Let's talk a little bit about this this Newsweek hit piece on Donald Trump in Cuba. Now, first and foremost, folks, I don't see any link of actual Donald Trump going to Cuba, meeting with Cuban officials, nothing of that nature. In the Newsweek article, it states, and I quote, Trump's organization indirectly, is what it says, indirectly gave money to a consulting firm that ended up meeting with Cuban officials about potentially doing business 
in Cuba. Now, did Donald Trump say, hey, I want to meet Fidel Castro? Go out there. No, he did it. And you see, that's what you dumbasses that aren't capitalists, that's what you seem to fail to comprehend, that this man has a billion dollar or a multi-billion dollar organization. All right? Tens of thousands of people under him. All right? Hundreds of executives. All right? Hundreds of executives. Now, each and every one of those executives, I'm sure, are highly rewarded if they're able to make a deal for Mr. Trump and make it considerably profitable for the Trump organization. I'm sure they get raises. I'm sure they get bonuses. Just like any corporation, folks, all right? All right? Just like any corporation. And how I have investigated this particular hit piece by the Newsweek is that an executive that is with the Trump organization attempted to utilize uh, Trump organization money to hire a consulting firm called Seven Arrows Consulting, I believe it was the name. And this consulting firm was the actual conduit in which any communication with any Cuban officials was conducted. There was no goddamn sit-down. There was no goddamn meeting with Castro and goddamn Trump there was no nothing. It's nothing. It's crap. It's a hit piece. And folks, not to mention, in the same hit piece article, all right, there's a video if you actually go to the internet website version of this uh, hit piece, where they not only say that not only did this happen, but sometime after this particular meeting. Donald Trump attempted to run for president in 1999 under the Reform Party, and he talked about how he wanted to keep the embargo on Cuba and that Castro needs to be taken down and that any business that was going to be happened to or that is that is going to be taking place, I should say, between Cuba will exclusively benefit Castro and not the people. And he even said in that speech that Cuban officials had approached him to build hotels in Havana, and he said, not as long as Castro is in power, all right? This is a pure goddamn hit piece, and I cannot believe that these damn liberals and these people that are such Trump haters are utilizing this and making a trend on Twitter, trying to spread it around like there's some goddamn fire. There ain't no fire, for Christ's sake, man. That's why I'm saying this is a pure hit piece, all right? A pure hit piece. I mean, D Donald Trump, I mean, that's what you people don't understand. I mean, it's like uh, it's like a restaurant, a person that owns a restaurant, okay? Let's say that person who owns a restaurant, uh, he's an owner, or she's an owner, whoever. And they're there on a very nonchalant basis because they've constructed a restaurant system in which it is self-sustaining, especially if they have a competent manager that's running the ship. Now, let's say that manager comes across some product that was maybe, I don't know, food, maybe some shrimp, maybe some fish, maybe some uh, uh, you know slabs of meat, maybe some T-bones, whatever the case might be comes in through the back door by, you know, a couple of kids who stole that particular merchandise, okay? Now, the manager looks at the stolen merchandise and says, whoa, man, I mean, I could make my boss a lot of money. That could give me a bonus, you know, he could, or I could potentially take a holiday for two weeks or something of that nature. Let me go ahead and make a move on this illegal food, even though it, it, it looks great, great cuts, doesn't look like anything's wrong with it. They buy the illegal food and then sell it in that business. Does that make the owner of the company participant in illegal activity? I mean, it's, it's, it's that kind of capacity in which uh, they're trying to connect Donald Trump with this Cuba scenario. All right? I mean, I, I mean, in this case, for the Cuba scenario, no, nothing was stolen. There was no stolen activity or anything of that capacity. The executive just arranged a consulting firm 
to meet with the officials of Cuba to hear what they had to say. All right? And that's all there is to it, for Christ's sake. All right? So give me a break. Give me a goddamn break. Jesus Christ. Give me, give me my drink. Give me my damn drink. And, you know, I, I'm looking on Twitter right now. People are saying, oh, uh, the, uh, uh, the owner is responsible. No, it's not. If that's the case, uh, how come Chipotle is still in business? Huh? I mean, with, with that ridiculous outbreak of whatever the hell they were putting in their freaking garbage meat. You know what I mean? Huh? Okay, yeah, they're responsible, but they're not going to be directly responsible. The argument in a lawsuit will be that, hey, it was our supplier. All right? It was our supplier, you idiot. So learn business before you start commenting, you stupid, dumb, idiot trolls. I'm telling you, you people are more idiotic uh, than, you know, some half a tarred elementary kid with a freaking goddamn helmet on its head, you stupid, dumb imbecile. All right? So shove it up your ass. Anyway, let me move on for Christ's sake. I am saying this is a hit piece from the word go. And for this particular hit piece to be able to be coming out now is just more and more desperation coming out of the Hillary Clinton campaign. I mean, it's desperation. I'm serious. It's utter desperation, for Christ's sake. And I cannot believe that people are... I mean, look at this. Look at Twitter, for Christ's sake. Trump in Cuba. They actually believe... I mean, this is how stupid people are in America today, all right? This is how stupid people are in America. They look at Trump in Cuba, they click on that trend, and, you know, just imagine the Black Lives Matter folk or the ignorant goddamn liberal folk. They look at that, and you know what they interpret in their head? Oh, my God, Donald Trump met with Fidel Castro? Oh, my... Even though uh, freaking Obama... Uh, went there and practically gave him head. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, but no, no, no. Oh, my God, Donald Trump. Oh, I, shut up, you stupid morons, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, Trump. He, he, uh, if he met with Fidel Castro. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 shut up. Just shut your mouth. Jesus Christ, man. Hit piece, man. Desperation hit piece. And let me tell you something, Newsweek. Why don't you release all the documents? Because all you're doing is scouring through uh, uh, depositions. You're scouring through old lawsuits. And that's exactly where this particular piece of information comes from. So why don't you release all the data instead of nitpicking the garbage that you're trying to put as sensational journalism, you sorry sacks of crap. All right? Give me a goddamn break. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm going to move on because everybody knows that this is a goddamn desperation piece. All right? And meanwhile, while this piece is being circulated, where the hell is Hillary Clinton at, huh? Where in the hell is Hillary Clinton? I'll tell you where she's in. She's in Chicago right now having a goddamn fundraiser for $4 million, all right? $4 million. I mean, how much more money does this uh, uh, Michael J. Fox and the Shakes broad really need? How much does she really need? She's already losing the election. She has put over $200 million in advertisements against Trump. I mean, what else? I mean, what else? How much more? How much more? $4 million, for Christ's sake. Now, I'd like to know if Hillary Clinton is actually going to show up, all right? If he's actually going to show up or if she's going to do one of those, uh, uh, you know, green screens from, you know, uh, uh, broadcasting from another location, that sort of thing, all right? I mean, give me a goddamn break. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm just, I'm sick. I can't believe anybody would still support this woman, especially after the DNC leaks, especially after all the data that's come out, all the corruption, the criminality. You people are stupid, seriously. I'm serious. You people are stupid. Jesus Christ. I'm serious. If you were voting for Hillary Clinton, I, I, I mean, let me, let me tell you something. I wouldn't hire you. If I found out you were a Hillary supporter, I'd, I'd, I'd fire your ass. 
all right, because you are an irrational idiot, all right? You are an irrational, anti-American, stupid piece of idiot, imbecilic trash that obviously closes a blind eye to corruption and criminality whenever, I don't know, it it, it, fits, it, it fits your narrative, uh, it fits, you know, whatever. I don't know what the motive is, for Christ's sake, man. I don't know. Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, if you're voting for Hillary Clinton, you're an anti-American piece of trash. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, if, if, when Donald Trump starts deporting these illegal immigrants out of the country, I think he, they should start with you. They should start with you, liberal, uh, pro-criminal, pro-corruption party piece of trash. I think you should be deported out of here. I'm serious. Get out of my country! All right, you hate it so much? Get out! Get out of my country! You want to sit here? You want to kamikaze our country with this goddamn mulatto that's in the freaking White House, for Christ's sake? Get out! Get out of my country! If you are not voting for Donald Trump this election, you are anti-American. I mean, there is no if, ands, or buts about it. That's what this election is all about. Trump is for America, and Hillary Clinton is for herself and the bureaucratic international institutionalists. Get out of my country, all of you anti-American pricks. Get out. Get out of here. Go to North Korea. Go to Venezuela and live the goddamn socialist life, you son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'm sorry, folks. I didn't mean to get off keister here. I mean, but seriously, I cannot stand these people. I think Hillary Clinton was great. I think that she's so presidential. I, I love her. You stupid, dumb scumbags. Are you turning blinders onto the fact that they robbed Bernie Sanders? Whatever happened to the Bernie Sanders people? Where the hell are those assholes, huh? Where are the feel the burners? You know what I'm saying? Where are the feel the burn people? They're going for Hillary Rotten Clinton because, hey, hey, I'm Bernie Sanders, and I'm telling you that you need to vote for Hillary Clinton. I already got your money now. There's no reason to continue to think that I'm going to be the president here. You just need to go. You know, you need to do what you have to do, and I will tell you what to do, and what you need to do is come on over here and take your underwears off. All right? Come on over here and take your underwears off, all right? Huh? And keep contrib. That's right. Keep contributing. Don't worry about the pants tent. Don't worry about the pants tent. That's right. And keep contributing. Keep contributing here. Oh yes, that's right. You, you feel the boing? Hey? You feel the boing? Hey? 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 Uh, come on, sit on my apple. Come on over here and sit on my apple. It's Uncle Bernie. You know Uncle Bernie. Come on, let me feel the boing. All right, you feel that boing? Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, you feel that boing? That's right, sit on that apple. Keep contributing. Oh, I'm going to write a book now. I'm going to write a book now. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, keep contributing. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you heard Uncle Bernie. Oh, you heard Uncle Bernie. Now go ahead and clean yourself up. And don't tell anybody I told you to take your underwears off. And vote for Hillary Clinton because you're stupid and you don't know any better. And I'm Bernie Sanders and you're not. That's what he did to you, feel the burners. How could you sit here and support Hillary Clinton when he, she stole the nomination from Uncle Bernie, you dumbasses? She stole the nomination. The proof is in the DNC leaks. The proof is in the DNC leaks, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, come on. Come on. Imagine a country where jobs are plentiful and families can get ahead. A country where veterans are treated with dignity and respect. A country so powerful, terrorism is in retreat. Our families safe. A country run by a leader whose career was built on success. 
a leader who isn't beholden to special interests, but to the people themselves. Make America great again. Donald Trump for president. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. I'm telling you this right now, you sons of bitches that are voting for Hillary Rotten Clinton, you're anti-American. I spit on you people. You understand that? I mean, out here, Donald Trump's out here. He's making stump speech after stump speech out here. Uh, you know, uh, thousands of people are attending his rallies for Christ's sake. Here you got Hillary Clinton going to Chicago incognito to get a goddamn $4 million fundraiser. Huh? Who's the elitist? Huh? You stupid, sorry sacks of crap. How many billionaires are supporting Hillary Rotten Clinton, you dumbasses? Huh? Stupid. You people are stupid. You're stupid. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let me move on, all right? Let me move on. Because I don't want to talk about Hillary Rotten Clinton. She makes me sick. She makes me want to throw up nasty chicken grease and corn oil and cream of wheat with five-day-old cereal and stomach plasma and corned beef. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, folks, uh, did you hear this scumbag Obama... Our supposed president last night gave a town hall to what seemed like the majority of the people attending were military members. Did you hear him just literally just disrespect our military right in front of their faces, man? I mean, seriously, I, I'm getting tired of Barack Obama, man. I, I, I hope that when Donald Trump is elected president that he pursues charges on Barack Obama for treason. I, and there are, like, so many things that you can go after Barack Obama on a legal basis. I'm serious. This guy is a complete and utter scum bag. First and foremost, he chastised the Congress for overriding his veto and basically stated that it was the right thing to veto uh, a bill that would help 9-11 victims' families. He said it was the right thing to do, and he, he chastised the goddamn Congress for doing so in that town hall. All right. Secondly, folks, I don't know if you folks are um, if you saw this particular town hall, but there was an actual gold star mother. All right. And that means that if you're a gold star family, that means that you lost a uh, son or daughter out there in the uh, battlefield. I believe this particular gold star mother, mother, mother excuse me, mother, excuse me. Uh, the Gold Star mother uh, lost her son in Iraq, I believe, in uh, 2007. So she stood up and asked the president why exactly he will not use the term radical Islamic terror uh, in reference to the battle that we are basically facing and her son died fighting against. And Barack Obama, did you hear what he said? Do you hear what he said? Barack Obama actually looked at this gold star mother in the eyes and said that this idea of Islamic terrorism is a manufactured e issue. Yeah. It is a manufactured issue, for Christ's sake. Can you believe this crap? Islamic terror is a manufactured issue. That's what Obama said. He said that to a gold star mother. He said that in front of the military. You scumbag, Obama. You scumbag, mulatto. God damn it. I mean, take this man out of office, military, God damn it! Good God! He actually told a gold star mother that Islamic terror is a manufactured issue. I mean, good God, is this our president? Is this really our goddamn president? Islamic terror a manufactured issue? I mean, has this whole world gone mad? Are we in a different paradigm, for Christ's sake? Did we forget 9-11? Have we forgotten all the Islamic terrorist attacks since 9-11? I mean, good God, I'm sick of this crap, man. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, man. I mean, he disrespected our troops. He was spitting on our troops last night. That's what Obama was doing. He was spitting in our troops' face. Everyone who died for this country, everyone who died for Islamic terrorism, uh, fight.
fighting against Islamic terrorism, trying to defeat Islamic terrorism. Obama spit in their face. Obama spit in the military's face, and he was smiling. I mean, you should see his disgusting, sociopathic, psychopathic smirk. Did y'all see it? Did y'all see it, for Christ's sake? I mean, good God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. This is supposed to be our goddamn president. What, what a sick, what a sick, disgusting representation of America that Obama is. I'm telling you, Obama is spitting the faces of, of American troops. I can't believe that piece of crap. I can't believe that piece of crap. Jesus Christ, man. Give me the mic. Give me the, give me the goddamn mic. Thanks. Goddamn mulatto son of a bitch. Gonna sit over here and tell a gold star mom that Islamic terrorism is a manufactured issue. What a goddamn scumbag. What a scumbag. Man, I don't even want to talk about this issue anymore. I'm going to get so freaking pissed off, all right? I'm serious. I'm going to get so freaking pissed off. I, I may I may do something. I, I may start breaking more stuff than just freaking, freaking cans, for Christ's sake. I may start breaking more stuff, for Christ's sake, because it's, it's, this should get you angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. It should get you angry, for Christ's sake, that Islamic terrorism is a manufactured issue. This is our freaking president. This is our president. This is supposed to be a representation of the American people, for Christ's sake, man. Uh, uh, I can't stand this guy. I can't believe this guy could sit here and spit in our troops' face. Spit in America's face. God damn it. Give me my freaking drink. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. God damn son of a bitch. I'm telling you. I can't believe this guy. I'm telling you, I cannot believe this president of ours. A manufactured issue. What a filthy scumbag. What a filthy, disgusting little scumbag. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Obama anymore, for Christ's sake. I mean, every time I look at him, he looks like a freaking Taliban marathon runner, for Christ's sake. He looks like a terrorist, for Christ's sake, man. Anyway, look, I don't want to talk about that son of a bitch, all right? I mean, I hope that he is gone from office legitimately after this election. I don't want him to pull any kind of nuclear confrontation crap that he's trying to antagonize the Russians into doing so that it can justify his tenure beyond a second goddamn turn, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, let me move on. And look, I mean, it isn't just these Democrats that are stupid. I mean, these libertarians, folks, and let me tell you, this is why I never, ever identified as a libertarian, and I even have made criticism, major criticisms of the libertarian movement uh, back when I was broadcasting in 2008, 9, 10, 11, and 12, all right? Because I always knew that this libertarian movement was... It was not necessarily identified with any true politic, if you will. It was just a a group of of losers, for lack of a better term. And I know there were some legitimate libertarians. I'm not trying to disrespect them all. But for the most part, a bunch of losers that were trying to rebel against the two-party system and utilized a cafeteria-based political ideology, because that's really much what libertarians are, it's a cafeteria-based ideology. Libertarians think, well, I can be liberal in this, but I can be kind of conservative in this, and then I can be uh, kind of capitalist in this, and then uh, I can be kind of communist in this. I mean, this stupid, dumb, imbecilic, asshole socialist Bill Maher once identified himself as a libertarian. So that's why I have never, ever given any respect 
to the libertarian moniker because I always knew, all right, I always knew that these libertarians were going to show their true goddamn colors. And look, they did in their convention this past year. And not only did they show that the Libertarian Party is an utter joke by their convention, but who they chose as their goddamn candidate, this Gary Johnson moron, okay? Now, for you folks, uh, remember about a week or a week and a half, two weeks ago, Gary Johnson was busted on Morning Joe when Mike Barnacle uh, questioned Gary Johnson on his views on Aleppo. And this moron, Gary Johnson, looked at him with his feminine physical attributes, uh, looked at Barnacle cross-site. Um, what is Aleppo? And Barnacle couldn't believe it. He goes, "Are you, you're kidding me. Uh, no, uh, what, what, what is Aleppo? So once again, you know, he, um, he proved himself to be an idiot, but folks... He proved himself to be even more of an idiot. And I I don't understand why MSNBC is putting this guy on, because it seems to me that they know that Gary Johnson's a moron, and this is their way, MSNBC, the left-leaning media organization, to make libertarians and those on the right look imbecilic and stupid and pathetic. Gary Johnson was being interviewed by Chris Matthews, hardball with Chris Matthews, okay, And Chris Matthews asked him a simple question. The libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson, he asked him a simple question. Who is your favorite world leader? And Gary Johnson couldn't answer. And he literally said, "Um, I think I'm having another one of those what is Aleppo moments because I um, I can't really think of one. And this son of a bitch was like, hey, look, name one. I mean, any world leader, any world leader, for Christ's sake. And Gary Johnson just had like a Sarah Palin moment, was like, um, well, uh, the uh, former leader of Mexico, um, I forgot his name, um, the guy that used to lead Mexico. Uh, and you know the ironic part about it is he couldn't even name the leader of Mexico when he was the governor of New Mexico. I mean, good God, you can't make this idiocy up. This guy's the governor of New Mexico and tries to claim that one of his favorite leaders is a former president of Mexico, and this son of a bitch can't even name the leader or that he's... uh, I mean, I can't believe this crap. Anybody who is still a libertarian after this and is proud to put that... I noticed a lot of you idiots that were libertarians that used to talk garbage to me on Twitter, I noticed that y'all changed y'all's names now. Y'all, ain't li- y'all, y'all don't have libertarian in your goddamn name anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I noticed once Gary Johnson became the goddamn president, or uh, the, the presidential nominee for the Libertarian Party, you sons of bitches wanted to take that libertarian moniker right out of your social media accounts, and I don't blame you, boy. I don't blame you. Jesus Christ, what an imbecile Gary Johnson, for Christ's sake, man. What, he's an idiot, man. I I knew he was an idiot, all right, when I first saw him on the scene, all right, and then this guy putting out his campaign slogan, feel the Johnson, feel the Johnson, I mean, you couldn't get any more homosexual than that. I mean, just come out of the closet, Gary, seriously, man, I'm, I'm not joking around. Come out the closet, for Christ's sake. It's obvious that you're fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops. I mean, I sure as hell wouldn't stand uh, next to you in, in the same urinal, in the, you know, in the, in the urinal dividers. And I, No, none of that crap. No, yeah, I, this guy would be checking out my Johnson, trying to see if he could feel my... I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's stupid. It's sick. It's sick. So if you're voting for this guy, you're just as I think you're even dumber than Hillary Clinton supporters, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, at least Hillary Clinton can spew out a bunch of bureaucratic nonsense at will and, you know, can satisfy the dumb idiots within her uh, group of supporters. I mean, Gary Johnson is not even giving fodder for his supporters to be able to justify his stupidity. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, Jesus Christ. Give me my drink for Christ. Feel the Johnson. Get the hell out of here, you fruit bowl. Jesus Christ. <sighs> I mean, he doesn't know what Aleppo is. Can't name a goddamn world leader he admires. What an idiot, man. Kind of makes you wonder, I mean, who this guy blew to get to become governor of New Mexico, for Christ's sake. All right? I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know, maybe him and Bill Richardson had something going on for Christ. Y'all remember Bill Richardson? He used to be the governor of New Mexico, big wig in the Democratic Party, until he was caught lying, pretending that he was once an MLB baseball player when they realized he was freaking lying out his ass. All right? And when it came out and they said, look, you were never a major league baseball player, you lying son of a wannabe Fernando Venezuela son of a bitch. And that's when he completely faded into oblivion. But anyway, I digress, all right? I digress. Freaking idiot Gary Johnson. I'm telling you, you vote for this idiot, you're a moron, all right? I mean, if you vote for this idiot and you're actually promoting to vote for this idiot, we know exactly where you're coming from, you idiot, all right? Seriously. Anyway, folks, let me get to some international news. You know, but before I do that, you know, we got some time here. I want to take some calls. I want to hear what you have to say about this Gary Johnson stuff, uh, Barack Obama telling the Gold Star Mother that Islamic terrorism is a manufactured issue, uh, the Donald Trump hit piece by Newsweek. I want to hear from you. What do you want to talk about? Give me a call right now, 425-390-6146 is the number to call. I'm going to take a few calls, see what you have to say. Because, uh, you know, I'm a little curious here. All right, before we get into some of this international news, I want to hear what the people, what the people have to say about all this stuff. Anyway, once again, the number is 425-390-6146 is the name, or excuse me, is the number to call. All right. Uh, let's see, who do we got going on here? How about area code, uh, how about 386? You're on the horn. What's up? Hey, yeah, so uh, Gary Johnson is actually not really a, a, a real libertarian. Uh, he, he actually said that uh, a Nazi or a Jew should be cake, ba- forced to bake a cake for a Nazi if requested uh, with regards to the issue of gay marriage. He doesn't believe in freedom of association, so if you don't want to associate with a Nazi and you're a Jew and you own a business, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. And if you own a business and you want to associate with gays, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. So he's not really a libertarian uh, in the, like, the consistent philosophical sense. He's more like just some guy who randomly picked, like you said, like a cafeteria. There's no philosophy behind it. It's just a cafeteria of opinions that he arbitrarily uh, pieced together to make some kind of bizarre worldview. It doesn't really fit together. Well, you know, I, I agree with you, okay? In the traditional libertarian sense, he's not a libertarian, yet the party chose this man to represent the libertarian party on a national scale. So it goes to show you that the libertarian movement was not necessarily focused in the right wing in the pol- of the political spectrum. It was more focused on the left wing, all right? Because what is Gary Johnson? He's pro-immigration. He's pro-TPP. Uh, you know, this guy is, is just is a disgusting, filthy liberal and, and trying to pass himself off as a libertarian. That's why I never trusted libertarians. You can go back in the archive, folks. I've always been critical of this group, all right? I've always been critical of this group because it, it does not have any clear political objective, all right? And that's just all there is to it, all right? Now, I understand what you're saying that, you know, this man is not a real libertarian, but at this point, if this, if this presidential candidate is supposed to be representative of the libertarian party, then what is a libertarian anymore? Anyway, thank you very much for calling. I really appreciate it. How about 619? You're on the horn. What's up, man? Uh, hey, what's up, Ghost? This is Asha. Hey, what's going uh, on, Asha? How you doing, man? So, I don't know if you uh, – it's not about the subject, but it's about El Cajon. Have you heard about El Cajon, San Diego, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about the uh, – there was another black man shot in uh, El Cajon. Uh, there's some protest happening. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's a very precarious situation. The man uh, – allegedly, they were trying to say that he came out holding a gun. It ended up being a uh, – Vaping device, from what I understand. You got some 411 info on that, man? Well, yeah, pretty much, because I live in El Cajon. Like, I, my, I go to school, and I live down here. It's like one of the one of the El Barrio from San Diego, pretty much. And they're protesting. So, so this is literally right outside. 
right outside my house. They were protesting two times or blocking roadways two times. So it was one in the day and one at night. And they're just agitating. Um, it, it was funny because I actually saw a car, a group of people getting plowed down. Not it, it was it's on it's on Facebook or like on YouTube, but it's not really like it, it didn't hurt anyone. But it, it's just funny, and um, people are claiming that it's, it's still racism and stuff like that. It's systematic racism. When I to be honest, I beg like, I I beg to the fair. It, it was a babe. It was a babe, and when, the babe has a hole in it, and it looks like a gun. And I guess the guy didn't have a he didn't. He wasn't mental. He wasn't mentally stable, and I guess they they're like, oh yeah, the, the police didn't solve this. Uh, didn't didn't uh, didn't really think before uh, shooting. Well, and and you know, on top of that, Asho, uh, a lot of especially the black community. This is what I've been most critical about D. Ray McKesson and the Black Lives Matter community about. They're not educating their people that the proper way to deal with police is not to be confrontational, is not to curse, is not to disobey, it's not to go back into your car, it's not to put your hands in your pockets, these types of things. And uh, every time I've seen, and even in the cases where the cop was in the wrong, even in the case in Tulsa, which the cop is now being charged for, uh, I believe, murder or manslaughter or some, some charge to that capacity, the man was going back into his car, which, you know, I'm not trying to say that lethal, uh, lethal justice was justified in that instance, but you're leaving yourself open for an opportunity to be lethally dispensed justice upon, whether that be a billy club, a tasing device, a gun. And this is what the black community needs to be educated on, is that they should not react in negativity towards the cops. And if by some chance they are wrongfully uh, arrested, uh, they are wrongfully uh, abused, wrongfully harassed, if they were to confront these officers in a calm and collective manner, they could sue the city and have a legitimate case on their hands instead of escalating it into a lethal situation. You understand? Yeah, yeah. You, how you, you pretty much teach us this already, how... Uh, you know, know your rights. Uh, you have the right to remain silent, and yeah, some I, I guess some people, some people don't understand the concept of that, and that's why they end up getting shot and killed. I'm straight up, Ash. Oh man, uh, keep us posted on the El Cajon uh, situation. Uh, are there any plans for any uh, protests tonight? Uh, do you hear anything for the grapevine? What's going on out there? Um, I'm not sure. Probably. Later on, probably if they if they release if he's not getting charged or something like that, there there'll probably be another protest. But um, they did try to get down to the freeway, but the the cops did 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 make a really good job in in blocking the 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 entrance to the freeway so they don't you know start going down there because that's what they do. That's they they love to block the freeways. But to be honest, if I was a driver, I would I would just go right through them. I, I don't care. I'm I'm trying to go home. Yeah, well, no kidding, and they're putting themselves in uh, the way of traffic. I mean, what what, what do they expect? Anyway, Asho, you want to give any shout-outs to anybody, man? Uh, the Capitalist Army, I'm just heading home. I'll have to log on, all right? The uh, Capitalist Army, chat room. Team chat room. All right, man. Hey, thank you very much for calling there. Uh, stay safe, Asho. Uh, make sure to steer clear from any of those protests. All right, because I'm telling you this right now, the last thing you need to do is commiserate with uh, some of these Black Lives Matter supporters. And, folks, uh, I don't know if you all are aware, uh, in the latest Charlotte uh, riots, uh, more than 70% of the people that were arrested in these Charlotte riots or detained all had out-of-state licenses, had all out-of-state IDs. So this goes to show you that it's not the cities that are, per se, rising up and agitating this violence. These are outside perpetrators that are being paid, bust in. I don't know how they're getting there, but they're getting there. And it has a lot to do with the Black Lives Matter being funded hundreds of millions of dollars by George Soros, the Ford Foundation, and all these nonprofits that are basically agitating the unrest that we are witnessing right before our very eyes. So I think everybody needs to, uh, you know, really understand that this agitation 
that's happening across the country is being directed from outside these cities. All right, it is being directed by outside these cities, for Christ's sake. Anyway, let me get another beer here, for Christ's sake. More beer, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I'm not joking, folks. Do not fall for the hype, all right? I mean, you know, we have a lot of people that have a vested financial interest now in becoming professional protesters. And that's exactly what fruity-ass AIDS HIV advocate D. Ray McKesson is. He is a paid protester, all right? I mean, same with all these Black Lives Matter supporters. And that's why I have always stated, why aren't they educating their people? Why aren't they educating their people to understand their rights, to understand how to confront an officer, to understand that you're not supposed to go into belligerent degeneracy whenever you're in confrontation with an officer? You have the right to remain silent, all right? Be compliant. Don't be defiant, all right? And if, for whatever reason, the cop infringes upon your rights, you have a case. But you have no case when you're belligerent, when you're aggressive, when you're noncompliant, you have no case. You're justifying the cop's case to assert himself in a physical capacity. And why these hundreds of millions that are going into Black Lives Matter couldn't be funneled into teaching the black community this approach with police officers, I have no goddamn idea, all right? I'm serious. I have no goddamn idea. But, hey, this is really the crux of the matter, folks. I mean, I strongly advise you to look up the statistics of crime, and this is why you have such apprehension with law enforcement as it relates to the urban demographic. The statistics prove, and these are the FBI statistics, that blacks have a propensity for black-on-black crime, black-on-white crime, gun crime, robbery, so on and so forth, folks, all right? I mean, look at the crime data. It doesn't lie, all right? I mean, it does not lie. The statistics don't lie, all right? Now, I know that Black Lives Matter wants to pretend that those statistics don't exist. They exist. They're real, all right? And once you start rectifying that scenario on why there is so much criminality within the black community, then you can start protesting. Then you can start being like, hey, wait a minute, we're being oppressed. But with all due respect, black folk, you need to look at the statistic and realize that There is something majorly wrong within your community, and it has nothing to do with whitey. It has everything to do with how your children are being brought up. And that's all there is to it. I mean, if we take a look at how many of these black convicts had single parents, I can guarantee you it's over 75%. I can guarantee you it's over 75%. And if they're being raised by single mothers, how are they raising men? How are they raising these men? And you see, once you identify that particular contradiction, black folk, that's when you can start moving forward. But until then, all right, until then, you can't sit here and blame whitey. You can't sit here and blame cops. You can't sit here and blame society with all due respect Uh, you need to look in your mirror and blame yourselves, all right? I hate to reiterate this, and I'm going to move on to the next subject matter once I do. We are living in an America that is under a black president. We have a black attorney general, all right? I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, who are you all blaming? Who are you all blaming, Black Lives Matter? We We have a black president. I mean, if it's this racist, if it's this racist under a black president, what makes you think that it's going to get any better? What makes you think that the approach that you are doing now, the approach that you're doing now is going to be any better? I strongly advise each and every one of you Black Lives Matter supporters to hear the speech that Don King gave before introducing Donald Trump in Ohio. That's some realism you black folks need to hear. That's some realism right there. You heard the speech. 
But behind the glitter lies this stark truth. In Hillary Clinton's America, things get worse. Under her dishonest plan, taxes keep rising, terrorism spreads. Washington insiders remain in control. Americans losing their jobs, homes, and hope. In Donald Trump's America, people are put back to work. Our families are safe. The American dream achievable again. Change that makes America great again. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. So that's all I'm saying, folks. We are under a black president. We have a black attorney general. Why are you not going to the White House and protesting out there? How come you're not going out to... Uh, where the Department of Justice is, and start protesting out there. Why aren't you all doing that, huh? Oh, why? why? Because George Soros won't fund your trip out there, huh? George Soros won't fund a trip to Washington, D.C., so you can protest where the crux of the problem is, huh? That's right. Uh, And no, I will not send you out there to the White House. I am George Soros. And I will tell you what to do, because you black people are mine. Your black people are mine. Your mothers are mine. Your aborted fetuses are mine. The black people in jail are mine. Obama is mine. Loretta Lynch is mine. Everything is mine. The world is mine. Because I am George Soros, and I will show you through power. (laughs) I'm serious, man. That's the only reason why Black Lives Matter is not out there at the White House right now, is because George Soros, the Ford Foundation, aren't going to bust them out there. They're not going to fund their trip out there. Think about it, man. Think about it. Just think about it. Just saying. I mean, we're under a black president. We have a black attorney general. If it's this racist, why is it Whitey's fault? I mean, I'm just saying, why is it Whitey's fault if we have a black president and we have a black attorney general? Why is it Whitey's fault? Come on, Black Lives Matter. I'm asking you. I'm asking you, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. And somebody said Don King made millions exploiting black men. Exploiting black men? What are you talking about? He made black men millions of dollars, for Christ's sake. I mean, had Don King not been in the lives of many of these black men uh, that that he uh, promoted as, as a boxing talent, they'd be out there in the gutter somewhere. They'd be shining shoes somewhere. They'd be in a goddamn jail cell somewhere, for Christ's sake, man. I hate when people uh, try to hate on Don King because, uh, you know, he was able to make some money off of a, you know, a, a, a couple of meat bags beating each other's brains in. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, man, seriously. I mean, uh, he made Ali millions of dollars, man. He made Tyson millions of dollars. He made Larry Holmes Millions of dollars, for Christ's sake, man. Exploiting black people, for Christ's sake. Come on, man. Come on. I mean, and people are going to say, I know the argument, well, um, Ghost, he did kind of rob them, you know. I mean, they were supposed to make, like, let's say $10 million, And because Don King understood the whole uh, financial aspect of contract law and business law, uh, a lot of these fighters were only, they were only able to get $2 million. Oh, oh, you know what? I, I, feel, I feel really bad now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, give me a break. How can You understand? That's why Don King is still around. You understand that? That's why nobody's ever touched Don King, because how can you hate on somebody like Don King who is giving somebody an opportunity and giving them so much money that he's giving them the opportunity to be ripped off that amount of money? I mean, I'm just saying I'm just saying, if they didn't take the deal with Don King, they wouldn't have made dick, all right? But they took the deal with Don King, and even though Don King said, look, I'm going to pay you 10 bucks, or excuse me, I'm going to pay you 10 million bucks, and at the end of the fight, Don King was like, well, you know, there's management fees, there's trainer fees, uh, there's uh, promoter fees, uh, there's this fee, that fee. Here, here's 2 million bucks. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for a boxer who is nothing more than a meat bag bashing people's brains in, uh, getting paid two million bucks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. I, you know, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm just saying, man, don't be hating on Don King. This is a man who utilized the tools necessary, and he was black, folks. All right, he was black. He utilized the tools necessary that were in front of him to make himself a million dollars. I mean, I mean, this guy, if he ain't worth 500 million bucks, if he ain't worth at least 450 million bucks, he ain't crap. All right? He ain't crap, for Christ's sake, man. I'm serious. People are going to sit here and hate on Don King, man. Are you kidding me? He, he took people out of the ghetto, baby. He took people out of the ghetto, for Christ's sake, man. He's an American dream story, baby. I mean, is it Don King's fault that these meatbags didn't know how to finance themselves, didn't know anything about contract law, didn't know anything about uh, business or anything? How? Why is that Don King's fault? Huh? Why is that Don King's fault? Why is that Don King's job to sit here and say, okay, Muhammad, okay, Ali, now you see this right here? Let me, let me put this contract right in front of you here. Now you see that right there, Muhammad? It says that I'm going to get 20% of uh, a fee of, of, a, of a manager fee. Okay, you see that right there, Muhammad, 20%. Now, if you take a look at this other page right here, okay, I'm going to take 15% of a trainer fee. Okay, that's what we're going to do right here, Muhammad, okay? I'm going I'm to get a little 15% of a trainer fee here, all right? Let me see. What else? Oh, yeah, that's right. We got we to gotta have a traveler's fee, all right? We got a traveler's fee here. I mean, why, why is that Don King's fault? Why is that his problem? Can somebody explain that? Why? Give me a freaking break. Anyway, I didn't mean to digress there. People are making fun of Don King because, oh, he exploited uh, meat bags that beat each other's brains in. I mean, give me a freaking break. Who cares, all right? I mean, look, I like boxing. I like boxers, okay? But let's be honest. Most boxers, you know, what, what happens to them? They end up in jail. They end up dead. You know what I mean? I mean, let's... I mean, look at uh, Ayabuchi. Y'all remember that guy, Ayabuchi? Y'all remember that guy? Uh, he was uh, fighting in the heavyweight division during the time when David Tua uh, was competing for the heavyweight title, for Christ's sake. All right? Remember David Tua? Anyway, Ayabuchi kicked the living bejesus out of David Tua before he even got to the goddamn uh, title shot. All right? And what did Ayabuchi decide to go and do? He decided to go out and physically and horrifically rape a woman prior to him potentially fighting for the title, and Ayabuchi, I think, is still doing about 10 years in prison for that, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? All right? I mean, look at Diego Corrales. Y'all remember that guy, Diego Corrales, this son of a bitch? He was always, uh, you know, beating his you know, girlfriend's ass, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting into bar brawls and all this other crap, for Christ's sake. Ends up killing himself in a goddamn motorcycle accident, for Christ's sake. Y'all remember Johnny Tapia? Uh, out of Albuquerque, for Christ's sake, great-ass fighter, badass fighter, for Christ's sake, huh? badass fighter, as a matter of fact, ends up killing himself, committed suicide, uh, you know, I think four or five, not ten years, I think, after he retired, all right? I mean, I can go on and on, all right? So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, who's the bad guy, really? All right? I mean, I'm tired of people, you know, pointing the finger at Don King like he's a bad guy or something, had Don King not been around, these boxers would have never made any money, period. All right? They would have made nothing. All right? They wouldn't have made nothing. I'm just saying. Anyway, folks, I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, you've got to take the good with the bad. You can't just sit here and generalize a Don King. All right? Anyway, let me move on, folks. I didn't mean to get off on this tirade about Don King, but these assholes out here, you know what I mean? Anyway, folks, uh, we've been talking about Kashmir as of late, folks, and I've been saying that if there's going to be any nuclear weapons being dispersed, it's going to be in this region here. India claimed that it had to do surgical strikes against Pakistani positions in Kashmir in order to control the terrorism within the region. Okay, Now, this means that uh, you know, they were out there uh, obviously doing uh, air raids, uh, bombings in strategic areas in an attempt to heat off any potential, eh, I don't know, offensive from any kind of Pakistani militants within the Kashmir region. Anyway, folks, Pakistan is not, not taking this very lightly, and I think that everybody needs to keep their eyes glued on this Kashmir situation because I'm telling you, once Kashmir 
uh, turns into a nuclear confrontation and there is a nuclear weapon detonated, that is a nuclear genie that will be released from the bottle that we can't put back in. And everybody across the world will signal to themselves that because these people use nukes, it's, it's open season. It's time for me to use nukes. And I don't like the potential of that. I think everybody needs to keep their eyes glued to this situation. Both India and Pakistan are nuclear powers, folks. And, of course, uh, we read a report, or I reported on a report here a couple of days ago, that Pakistan was the country that sold the nuclear capability to North Korea. And we all know that uh, Pakistan and their infamous uh, uh, nuclear scientist, A.Q. Khan, uh, A.Q. Khan, of course, uh, attempted to try to sell the same data uh, to bin Laden and al-Qaeda and was caught by Pakistan and was jailed. I'm not too sure if A.Q. Khan is still jailed at this point in time because he was jailed during the Pervez Musharraf tenure of Pakistani power. And uh, since Pervez Musharraf is no longer... Uh, in power. He's pretty much hated as a leader in Pakistan, and uh, the leadership at this point in time is in complete opposition to a Pervez Musharraf political stance. So uh, I don't know where A.Q. Khan is, but I can tell you this. I can tell you he's probably producing more weapons, uh, nuclear weapons for Pakistan. So once again, folks, a lot of things happening out here in the disputed region of Kashmir between India and Pakistan. Pa- uh, India, of course, uh, did airstrikes, quote, sh- uh, surgical strikes against Pakistan in areas of Kashmir to supposedly uh, repel potential Pakistani militants that were causing supposed ruckus in the region. So we shall see what happens in Kashmir. I've been saying this, folks, right? Haven't you noticed? Nobody was even talking about Kashmir until I started talking about it. And then once I started talking about it, the whole goddamn region turned into a full fledged goddamn war all of a sudden you see what i'm saying that's why when you listen to this broadcast you are getting the straight political dope baby the straight political dope anyway on that note give me my drink give me my drink for christ's sake good stuff Anyway, folks, once again, keep your eyes glued on Kashmir. It could be a potential uh, nuclear situation that could domino all across the globe. Now, we are in the third hour of the True Capitalist radio broadcast, and for you folks that are unaware, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. All right? Before we get to anything else, please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, please give me uh, me a follow. All right, follow me on Twitter, baby. The Twitter name to follow is politicsghost. All one word, no underscores, politicsghost is the name to follow. All right, now let's move on to another subject matter so we can get on with the remainder of the broadcast here. Now, the U.S., according to reports, is on the verge of ending Syrian peace talks with Russia. All right, now I wonder why. I mean, I've been telling you folks, I mean, the United States is trying to agitate Russia into a nuclear confrontation. We're now 39 days away from this election, all right? And I'm telling you, the United States is antagonizing Russia, and I think that they have a vested interest in doing so because they want to suspend the goddamn elections, all right? I mean, you've got to tweet at your congressman, you've got to tweet at your senator, and tell them to stop, stop this crap, stop trying to agitate uh, the global powers into nuclear confrontation, for Christ's sake. The American people don't want it. We don't want nuclear war. We don't want a nuclear confrontation. We don't want it, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ, man. I'm not, I'm not joking around. We don't want it. All right? We don't want World War Three. We don't want nuclear war. Stop it, you sick son of a bitch is in power. Stop. Just stop it. I'm telling you, I mean, this needs to stop. I mean, the United States on the verge of ending the Syrian peace talks, you know who's negotiating those peace talks? None other than Herman Monster lookalike son of a bitch, 
uh, John Hines Carey, all right? I'm serious. John Carey over here, Mr. Ketchup Man, is out here negotiating these freaking ceasefire deals with Russia. The same asshole that negotiated the Iran nuclear deal. The same asshole that negotiated the Iranian nuclear deal. This is the guy that's negotiating the ceasefire with Russia. Oh, that's just great, huh? That's just great. Jesus Christ, man. I'm not joking around. I'm not joking around for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I mean, this is scary, man. I mean, people wake up. Syria is now the new proxy war between America and Russia. Syria is now the new proxy war between America and Russia, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, man. I'm serious. I'm tired of this crap, all right? And look, even though the United States is on the verge of ending Syrian peace talks, Russia says it will support a 48-hour ceasefire to allow aid into Aleppo. This is where we were at, what, two Mondays ago. This is the position we were at. Remember, they tried to send a U.N. convoy in there and mysteriously got bombed, and the United States and Russia were blaming each other. And evidence shows that there was a United States drone in the region when this U.N. convoy was attempting to deliver aid. And that is what pretty much nullified the goddamn ceasefire the last time they tried this son of a bitch. I mean, it's getting scary, folks. Uh, I mean, people need to wake up what's going on here. That's why uh, if you are voting against Donald Trump, if you are voting for Hillary Rodden Clinton, you are anti-America, all right? I mean, this woman has already said that she wants war with Russia. Uh, Putin has already said that, hey, look, we know Hillary Clinton wants war with us. If this woman is elected president, it's all-out war. Uh, Putin has said this. I mean, that's why I'm telling you people, all right? That's why I'm telling you. If you vote for Hillary Rodden Clinton, you are anti-American. You're anti-American. You're anti-American. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me move on to the last of the foreign news, folks. All right? China is warning Japan now not to, quote, play with fire in the disputed South China Sea region, folks. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. What, are we going to have another Sino Japanese war or something, for Christ's sake? I mean, what the hell is going on here, man? I mean, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I mean, why in the hell is China threatening Japan? I'll tell you why, folks. Because uh, this damn uh, Chinese-Japanese rift goes back hundreds of years, if not thousands, all right? Uh, The Japanese and the Chinese cannot stand each other. They can't stand each other, all right? Serious. They just cannot stand each other. And now that Japan is siding with many of the other countries that border the South China Sea in this South China Sea dispute, now now you've got China flexing its nuts and saying that if Japan continues to assert itself in any capacity in the South China Sea region, that Japan is, quote, playing with fire. Playing with fire, for Christ's sake. So, Look, I, you know, I don't want to have to bring in Mr. Fortune Cookie, so I don't want to be too critical of the Chinese because I don't want to hear that guy. But I am telling you this right now, all right? This is another region in which China may start acting a little belligerent as a superpower to show its dominance to the international community. I would look for China potentially trying to agitate Japan, uh, Indonesia, uh, other other uh, areas in the region of the South China Sea. So once again, I strongly advise people that this world is gearing towards a worldwide confrontation, and I don't like it. And everybody needs to you know wake up. Everybody needs to take their heads out of their ass and realize the serious times that we are now in. And you need to start getting political, and you need to start getting political quick. All right. Anyway, let me let me. Uh, continue on. Let me me take some more uh, swigs from this beer here, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Ah, 
good stuff. Anyway, folks, I want to go off on a couple of subject matters here that, you know, are not necessarily political or business. I want to talk about this asshole by the name of Jim Carrey. That's right. I'm talking about liar, liar. I'm talking about, uh, uh, you know, Jim Carrey, that, that uh, Ace Ventura. I'm talking about that son of a bitch. I'm talking about dumb and dumber. I'm talking about that sorry sack of crap. Now, why am I bringing up Jim Carrey? Well, because first and foremost, folks, this stupid, sorry sack of sociopathic, psychopathic trash has had the audacity for the past several years talking against the Second Amendment, talking in favor of gun control, talking in favor of things like vaccinations, and trying to be very political in a leftist perspective, all right? You know, trying to be very leftist. He's, he has no problem trying to taunt people on social media. Hey, I think that your gun should be taken away. Hey, I think that you should, your gun should be taken away. Hey, I think that your child should be mandated to have vaccines, even if there are proven to have side effects. Well, let me explain something about Jim Carrey, okay? Jim Carrey had a girlfriend recently who killed herself, mysteriously. No one really understood why, uh, this girlfriend killed herself, even though she was with Jim Carrey at the time. She killed herself. And, of course, Jim Carrey tried to act as if he really gave two rats' asses. He tried to act as if he was distraught. But, folks, it comes to show. I mean, and this is out of a lawsuit being filed by the ex-husband of Jim Carrey's girlfriend, who killed herself that Jim Carrey actually infected his girlfriend, which is the plaintiff's ex-wife, okay, with herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, and I believe gonorrhea, all right? Now, I don't know if it's that super gonorrhea or whatever the case might be because, I mean, you know, you would think that a star like Jim Carrey would be able to go and get some quick penicillin from somewhere. He sure as hell knows how to get those nutter pills the way, the way he acts, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you would think that he'd be able to go get some goddamn penicillin and be able to stop old Drip Drip from old Penis over there. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So now the uh, ex-husband of Jim Carrey's uh girlfriend who killed herself is now filing a lawsuit against Jim Carrey stating that the reason this woman killed herself is because she confided in her ex-husband that she felt as if she was damaged goods, that she felt that she was uh, tainted uh, because of the fact that Jim Carrey had infected her. And this is, of course, according to court documents, of course. This is not my story. This is uh, out of the courts that allegedly Jim Carrey afflicted her with herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, and gonorrhea, and because of this, she killed herself because she thought that no one would ever want her, she's, a, she's damaged goods, she's tainted, so on and so forth. So, once again, the reason I bring this up, folks, is because, you know, since Jim Carrey is so quick to want to ban people's guns, want to ban people's Second Amendment. Why don't we ban this son of a bitch's gun? How about that? Why don't we ban his penis? Why don't we ban your penis there, Jim Carrey, since you want to take people's rights away, huh? You know what I'm saying? Since you want to take people's rights away, why don't we put a goddamn court order, a gag order on your penis, all right? I'm serious. Since you want to take away people's rights so much there, Jim Carrey, why don't we take away his right to screw since this man is going out and obviously according to this court document and according to alleged reports, he's out here infecting women with lifelong herpes simplex 1 and 2, for Christ's sake, man. 1 and 2. And gonorrhea on top of that, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, how dirty is this son of a bitch? Allegedly, of course. I mean, how dirty is this son of a bitch? You know what I mean? I'm serious, man. I'm sick of this guy. This couldn't have happened to a better idiot, in my personal opinion. And I am calling for, let's ban Jim Carrey's penis. All right? 
Seriously. Uh, you know, can we tweet at uh, Jim Carrey right now and say, your penis needs to be banned? Right now, I will, I will give a shout-out to anybody right now tweeting at Jim Carrey, all right? Anybody who's t- tweeting at Jim Carrey and telling him we need to ban his penis, all right? We need to ban his penis. Uh, I'm going to give you a shout-out right here, right now, folks. I'm not kidding around. All right, tweet at Jim Carrey, for Christ's sake. If you don't know his goddamn Twitter account, uh, here, let me go ahead and let me go look it up, for Christ's sake. I don't even follow this stupid, dumb, disgusting, disease-infested, allegedly son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can find this son of a bitch's Twitter. Yeah, Jim Carrey. It's all it's how it is. You know, Jim Carrey. It is what it is, all right? Tweet at this son of a bitch and say, we want to we wanna ban... We want to ban your diseased penis, all right? We want to ban your diseased penis, all right, because it's obviously a menace to society, all right? It's obvious that it's hurting people. It's obvious at this point in time it's killing people, all right? So I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Son of a bitch. I'm serious, man. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of Jim Carrey. I mean, y'all remember, this son of a bitch was out here trying to take everybody's guns away, for Christ's sake. You know, oh, I think the Second Amendment is horrible. I can't believe it. <laughs> Stupid son of a bitch. All right, you are, you are a sick, twisted prick. All right, do we got, do we got any Twitter shout-outs, engineer? <laughs> All right. Anyway, we got some idiot named Gary Johnson. We got Re- Remington in the house. We got Exara Hawks. We got New Jersey Crazy Train. That's horrible, for Christ's sake, man. We got Free Zord. Uh, we got G in the house. We got Ryan in the place. What's going on? Molested capitalist. Uh, ghost cuckers. You son of a bitch. Uh, we got, uh, who else we got? We got, we got I'm not going to say that name, you son of a bitch. Who else do we got? We got bird is the word. Jesus Christ, man. Seriously. I mean, we we will, we need to ban Jim Carrey's penis. We need to ban your penis, Jim Carrey, you son of a bitch. We got Templeton equals bureaucrat. Shut up. Baby killer ghost. Shut up. Notorious Keck in the house. What's going on? Uh, we got ghost-like stick. What the hell does that mean, you son of a bitch? We got Vet of Forum Wars in the house. We got Robert Xbox in the place. We've got Polak. What's going on? We got Texas Bean and Cheesers. <laughs> Shut up with that freaking crap, man. We got Han Hanzo in the house. We got Whole Broken Legs. Man, that's sick, you son of a bitch. That's enough of that crap. Enough of that crap. Ghost Jewish uncle. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Gator Tots Redux. Ghost's Wigger son, for Christ's sake. Come on, come on, man. Q-Tesh Productions, for Christ's sake. Uh, Ghost Stocks on Wife. Just shut up, idiot. Jesus Christ, what's going on to Croc Capitalist? Who else we got here? We got Alex 456 Poe. Uh, who else do we got here? We got Distilling Capitalist out here. Adventure in the place. Deplorable Doggo in the place, for Christ's sake. And I'm telling you, this son of a bitch, he needs to read it, all right? He needs to read it. We need to ban Jim Carrey's penis. We need to ban your penis. Bitch slap for ghost. Bitch, you come over here to San Antonio and do that, you son of a bitch. All right? Jesus Christ. Ghost of Ghost's Mommy. Jesus Christ, you son of a bitch. Anyway, who else do we got? We have the Trans Can. No playoffs for Ghost. Shut up, all right? The Deplorable Turkey Tits. Uh, Private Wilhelm Winter. Uh, Digital Wisdom. Uh, who else do we got here? All right? Who else? All right, I mean, we need to ban this idiot's penis. We got Corbalt. Corby Alt, what's going on? We got RMS Texanic. What the hell does that mean? Three hours wasted time. Shove it up your ass. Why are you even here there, boy? Why are you even here? We got Radioactive Sausage. 
Uh, we've got uh, cuck of the morning to you. Jesus Christ, man. Rational Ryan reviews. Uh, who else do we got? We got Supa in the place. What's going on? Uh, I'm not saying any more of these names. All right, that's about enough of this. All right, I think he gets the point that uh, we need to ban his penis. All right, I'm mean, seriously. I mean, that's that's enough of this idiot. All right, and let me let me tell you. Last but not least. All right, now that we've gotten over the whole ban Jim Carrey's penis, ban Jim Carrey's penis. All right, since he wants to take away our Second Amendment, I want to take away his ability to infect any other woman allegedly, with the herpes simplex 1, 2, and the gonorrhea, all right? And who knows? I mean, I'd like to have an AIDS check also on, uh, on Jim Carrey. I mean, I, I mean, did this woman really just kill herself because she got uh, a couple of batches of the herpes and the, and the gonorrhea? Or did Jim Carrey have the AIDS? I mean, who knows, all right? Who knows? Who cares anymore? These people are sick. All right? Hollywood is sick. All right? Hollywood needs to go bankrupt. It's already morally bankrupt. We need them to, to financially bankrupted. All right? Jesus Christ. All right? Anyway, let's move on, folks. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about Pepe! Pepe the Frog! Huh? Oh, man. Did y'all read this article, folks? All right? Did y'all read this? The Creator... Uh, Pepe, the frog, for Christ's sake. The actual creator, the guy who created the meme Pepe the frog, is voting for Hillary Rotten Clinton. All right? Now, no! Oh! I'm not joking. The creator of Pepe the frog is voting for Hillary Rotten Clinton, for Christ's sake. This idiot's name is Matt Fury... Matt Fury, all right, almost sounds like furry, for Christ's sake. Matt Fury, for Christ's sake, this guy is the one who created the Pepe the Frog meme, and now this son of a bitch is saying that he is going to vote for Hillary Rotten Clinton, for Christ's sake. I mean, good God, for Christ's sake, man. You can't make this crap up. You can't make this crap up, for Christ's sake, man. And let me tell you, this idiot by the name of, what the hell's his name? Matt Fury, he just done goofed as far as I'm concerned. I'm telling you this right now. I know that what he was trying to do, trying to be some master troll and be like, ah, I'm just going to tell everybody that I'm voting for Hillary Clinton and and it'll piss everybody off and I'll be the ultimate troll. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what, son? I think you done goofed, all right? I think you done goof. You want to be some big, badass, cuckold connoisseur troll, for Christ's sake? Well, by God, I'm telling you this right goddamn now. You done goofed. All right? You done goofed. You're going to sit over here and try to claim that you're the Pepe creator and that you're going to vote for Hillary Rotten Clinton? You just literally banged your goddamn penis into a beehive. Do you understand that, boy? Do you understand that, boy? Huh? If there's anybody that needs to be taken off the Internet, I mean, it's this idiot right here. I mean, he could have just kept his freaking mouth shut and just said, you know what, I I created the troll, I created Pepe, yeah, I'm not really political, I just did it, whatever. But no, 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 no. You know what he wanted to do? He wanted to twist the knife in everybody on 4chan, everybody on poll, everybody who's a part of uh, the whole Pepe phenomena. He's trying to twist the knife into your hearts, for Christ's sake, man. All right? He's trying to twist the knife into your goddamn hearts. All right? So once again, all right, this man, the guy who created Pepe the Frog, is voting for Hillary Rotten Clinton. How does that make you people feel? How does it feel to be on your own like a complete unknown? Like a rolling stone, yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying, folks, I'm, I'm, I'm just, look, I'm just trying to tell you that now that you put that Pepe the Frog on your goddamn social media, not only is it now a racist, anti-Semitic symbol, but apparently the person that created is down with Hillary Rotten Clinton, is down with her campaign, All right? Jesus Christ. I mean, you cannot make this garbage up. You cannot. 
I repeat, make this garbage up, all right? The creator of Pepe the Frog is a Hillary Clinton supporter. I mean, good God! Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, let's let's go ahead and move on to everybody's favorite part of the broadcast. And I'm talking about radio graffiti! That's right, folks. Radio graffiti, the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you've got to do is give me a call right now at 425-390-6146. And when I call on your area code, you've got exactly three to four seconds to say whatever it is that's on your mind. That's why we call this Radio Graffiti, folks, all right? Now, uh, before we get into anything, I'd like to remind everybody that we are going to pull down the autographs this Saturday night, all right? It's my autograph that's, you know, handcrafted. I mean, I'm serious. It's it, I hand-painted it, hand-produced it. I paint it with uh, metallic silver acrylic paint and sign it with gold acrylic. Uh, we're going to put it in a manila envelope. We're going to design some things on the manila envelope, folks. It's going to be nice, personalized. We've got an autograph of the engineer, which, you know, you don't really need to buy. But we're going to take all those down this Saturday, folks. So please, if you want to get to them, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take them down this Saturday night. If you, if you want one, all you got to do, go right now on your browser right now, in your browser address, type in ghost.market. You know, that's it. Simple as that, ghost.market, all right? And that's where you can go to get the autograph, folks. Each one of them are numbered. They're limited edition, so on and so forth. So uh, please go out there. They're going to be taken down this Saturday, for Christ's sake, all right? And that's all there is to it. And look, all you people that are trying to pit me against the engineers, stop it already, all right? Just stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. Shut up. You people on Twitter, I already see you. Shut up. Imagine a country where jobs are plentiful and families can get ahead. A country where veterans are treated with dignity and respect. A country so powerful, terrorism is in retreat. Our families safe. A country run by a leader whose career was built on success. A leader who isn't beholden to special interests, but to the people themselves. Make America great again. Donald Trump for president. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Imagine a country where jobs are plentiful and families can get ahead. A country where veterans are treated with dignity and respect. A country so powerful, terrorism is in retreat. Our families safe. A country run by a leader whose career was built on success. A leader who isn't beholden to special interests, but to the people themselves. Make America great again. Donald Trump for president. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Jesus Christ. And once again, folks, for you folks that have already ordered, I want to say my sincere apologies. Uh, we have an order situation in which uh, the uh, orders were delayed. We put an order in through Zazzle, folks, uh, for personalized stamps, personalized envelopes. Unfortunately, they denied me for whatever reason, even though I blew about $400 in an attempt to try to get these products so I could ship them out to folks. They didn't want me to print them because I guess allegedly my avatar is associated with political radicalism or partisanism or some kind of crap like that, okay? So everybody who has placed an order for autographs for yours truly or the engineer, they will be sent out this Saturday, all right? I mean, we're going to send them out in mass abundance, and they'll be out this Saturday. I want to extend my sincerest apologies for the delay Zazzle, for whatever reason, is acting like a cuckold connoisseur and is refusing to uh, print my particular stuff because apparently it, it, it's, it's bad. I don't know. I guess my goddamn avatar is uh, politically radical or something of that capacity. And look, I'm not the only one having a problem with Zazzle. Did you all see Ben Garrison? Ben Garrison now has a problem with Zazzle. They're starting to ban a few of his products. Even though they've been there since 2014, now they're starting to pull them down, for Christ's sake. So it's starting, all right? It's starting, for Christ's sake. It's starting. 
So anyway, folks, once again, uh, if you did order and you're waiting for them, my apologies. Uh, Zazzle really kind of back-ordered the whole, the whole situation, kind of screwed up the ordering system and the timetable in which we were going to send these out. So I'm sorry, but they will all be sent out by Saturday, engineer and, the autog- and my autograph. And if you happen to buy one that evening, we'll send it that Sunday or Monday. Okay, so that's it. We're taking them down this Saturday. That's all, all right? Anyway, I, let me go ahead and uh, do we have any damn radio graffiti callers there, engineer? All right, well, let's go ahead and get to some radio graffiti right now. <laughs> All right, folks, let's go ahead and get to some radio graffiti. Let's go to anonymous radio graffiti. My name is Michael J. Caboose, and I, hey, taxes. It's taxes, you idiot. That too. Uh, I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be. Anonymous radio graffiti. Alex four five six Poe Radio Graffiti. Look, what's going on between me and my wife is personal. All right. I'm happy your stick is sort of class. Is a good piece of ass. <laughs> <laughs> with your head about me and my wife, for Christ's sake, you damn sorry sacks of crap. Good God. Uh, how about 570 Radio Graffiti? Hey, Engineer. Yeah, shut up. Stop making fun of the Engineer, all right? Stop making fun of the goddamn Engineer, you sorry sack of crap. Jesus Christ. Christ. Who else do we have here? We got 517 Radio Graffiti. Uh, I just want to finish on your face, but I can't, so I'm going to finish on your autograph instead. Oh, that sounded that sounded like an incomplete thought, sir. All right. How about 484 Radio Graffiti? auto-tune me like I'm freaking T-Pain or something. You know what I'm saying? What the hell? Did you actually auto-tune that, you sick son of a bitch? Good God, man. Anonymous radio goddamn graffiti. I like to walk. I like to talk. I'll in the hand to join the band of any many men of the penis land. I'll roll a raft down the shaft to the cum white sands of penis land. Penis, penis, penis land, oh yeah. Uh, All right, Fruit Bowl, Jesus Christ. You sound a little too excited to be singing that there, you flesh flute player. Uh, We got, uh, how about Anonymous, Radio Graffiti? My mom makes me take my nips, cause my nips get bloody when the skin rips, cause I wear a tight shirt that chase my nips. Nobody likes bloody nips. Why don't you, you wear shut a- that up? Blo- bloody nips, asshole. Bloody nips, really? Jesus Christ, man. 704 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost Baby. This is Tub Chani. I want you to have your and Tub Guy Graffiti. Love, child. If you tell us that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Tub Tranny? Tub Tranny? I mean, God damn it. Oh, good God. Tub Tranny? Tub Tranny? Tub Tranny? Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack with that talk. Tub Tranny. Oh, gee. Oh, God, man. Come on. Give me the goddamn mic. Oh, Jesus. Tub tranny. Good God, man. 
don't even I don't even know what the hell to say after that crap. Tub tranny. Tub tranny. Nine oh four radio graffiti. Konnichiwa, go son. This is Totokun, the Japanese toilet guy. Once you you and should the engineer should come to Tokyo and we should have Water is being sprayed up on our poop deck. It'll be totally legit. Oh, my. I mean, what, with the, the Japanese toilet guy? I mean, come on, man. I, I, enough of this crap, all right? Good God. A Japanese toilet guy now? I should blindfold you with dental floss, for Christ's sake, for being so uncreative. How about 816 Radio Graffiti? Oh, hey, Ghost and expect you to answer the phone. Put the engineer on. I mean, it's his show. Now, shut up, you idiot. Get off! Get him off, for Christ's sake! It's my show, asshole, all right? True conservative... Excuse me. True capitalist radio. Why am I saying true conservative? Or true capitalist radio hosted by Ghost. Jesus Christ, it's because I'm not, I'm, I'm not inebriated enough yet. I need more beer! More beer is what I goddamn need, for Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. More beer, baby. True capitalist radio hosted by Ghost Ass Crack, all right? Anonymous radio graffiti. Anito Ghostini, radio graffiti. I am in Hoboken, New Jersey, and I think it's about time for everybody's favorite part of the brain. And I'm talking about multi track drifting. Uh-oh, this won't stop. <laughs> my leg, I can't move my leg. I can't get up. I'm a cripple. Jesus Christ, you son of a <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's not funny. It's too soon. That's not funny, you troll terrorist bastard. That's not funny. That's not funny. Jesus Christ, man. Give me the mic. Give me the mic, for Christ's sake, man. That is not funny, man. That is too soon. I cannot believe that you goddamn troll terrorists and cyber vermin can do this. It, it's such, it, it, I, I just... I, I mean, do you idiots even have a goddamn soul, for Christ's sake? Do you have a soul? Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. How about 724 Radio Graffiti? Hairbone! 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 Hey, hey, uh, oh, I, I know y'all are screaming hambone and that sort of thing. How come there's three guys over there and no females... Do I hear one female in, in, in any kind of vicinity? Well, why are there are three gentlemen there playing pocket pool listening to this broadcast? Can you explain that to me? Can you explain it? <laughs> My mommy's Can you explain why there's... <laughs> oh, my God. That, you, see, you see, this is what the American male has been reduced to. You see this? This is the American male, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, who else do we have here? We got Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, great. All right, you stupid idiot. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. This is Sparta Radio Graffiti. Look, what's going on between Nebraska and Mass Pony's personal, all right? Oh, yeah, no. I do not like them. Not a. No. Yeah. I don't know, but like, for example, that one point, I won't because, like, you know how. Are are you what what? Where did you all get that? Where in the hell? Where did you all get that? Ah! Ah! Oh! Get that 
did you all get that crap? Where? Where did you all get that? I mean, good God. Oh, my God. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Oh, my God. That, oh, Jesus Christ. Where did you all get that? I don't even know what to say after that. I don't even know what to say about that. What the hell? WTF? What the freak? Oh, Jesus Christ. Give me the freaking mic, man. Give me the mic. Or give me my beer. I mean, see, I mean, I'm, I'm discombobulated. I mean, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm discombobulated. I'm, uh, Jesus Christ, I don't want to ever hear that again. I don't want to hear that again. Where did you all get that? Where did you all get that? Oh, my God. I don't know what to say after that, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, come on. Come on, man. Oh, my God. 612 Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Man, you know, unfortunately, you got an Obama phone, and it sucks the chrome up of a 57 Chevy bumper. We can't hear Jack. All right? Jesus Christ. How about 610 Radio Graffiti? Favorite part of the broadcast, and I'm talking about it. I have to with what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, with these Obama phones, for heaven's sake. Anonymous radio graffiti. Hey, Joe, it's Toilet Guy. How about you, me, and Urinal Guy have a picnic? You pack the hot fudge and he brings the lemonade. It'll be totally legit. Oh, my. Oh, Jesus Christ with these damn... I, I, I don't even know what the hell to say. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, anonymous radio graffiti. Niggers deserve to die... Yeah, shut up. Niggers. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you're dead. Niggers. I mean, come on with that racist crap. I never said that. That's a splice. And everybody who knows me knows that, all right? Everybody who knows me knows that's a goddamn splice, man. I'm a melting pot of friendship, for Christ's sake. I'm a nice guy trying to splice me into some racist garbage, boy. How about 919, Radio Graffiti? Tectonic Plague, if you're listening in, get in the short bus where you belong. Uh, Jesus Christ, is that it, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. Uh, 386, Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. I'm serious, folks. I'm not kidding around. I hate capitalists. Damn. I mean, they're the ones ruining America. They're the ones ruining the world. They're the ones ruining this place, for Christ's sake. Soulless capitalists. Like Shut up. I never said that. Shut up with that splice. Do not besmirch capitalists. Do not besmirch capitalism, boy. Do you understand that? I don't ever want to hear that kind of crap splice again. Son of a bitch. Jesus Christ, 609, Radio Graffiti. Dormy Sweet, Radio Graffiti. What is this going to hit? What is this going to hit? Please stop. Enough. Enough. Uh, Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. What the hell is that supposed to be? Can somebody explain that? What the hell is that? Jesus Christ, anonymous radio graffiti. Jesus Christ. 
what? You mean to tell me that you waited in the crapper, all right, for an hour and a half holding in a diarrhea dump so that you could go and do that, for Christ's sake, you sick, twisted son of a bitch? Oh, Jesus, that's gross, man. These people are gross, man. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shut up, shut up. We know, crazy train. <laughs> shut up. 760, Radio Graffiti. Calling from Palm Springs. Wanted to let you know if you ever come down here, we got some Johnny Walker Rainbow Label. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, Rainbow Label? What are you talking about? Why in the hell would I drink Rainbow Label, for Christ's sake, man? Jesus Christ, sounds like something Ricky Martin's butt lover would drink, for Christ's sake. Why in the hell would I drink something like that, boy? Jesus Christ, who else do we have here? We got Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Are you looking for three penis wine but don't know where to find it? Are you a vintner of three penis wine and don't know how to get your product to the masses of college students, sex addicts, and felons that want to get their hands on it? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you need me, Taco from Taco Corp. I'm the number one importer exporter of three penis wine in the greater Chicago metropolitan area and possibly the world. Taco's three penis wine is great, made from the cock of a deer, dog, and a snake. I've been trying to make my own three penis wine, but I've hit a few snags. It is really hard to find a deer penis. And trust me, there's absolutely nothing on Craigslist. What? And I thought it'd be really simple to get a hold of dog penises, but really, it's quite difficult. Folks, if you're neutering your dog, don't stop at the balls. Get rid of that penis as well. I will take that penis and turn it into the finest three penis wine anyone has ever made in my bathtub. I bought a bunch of snakes, but I really don't know where to find the penises. Um, if you, I, 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 see, like, no real penis. I think maybe these are girl snakes, guys. The snakes have semen. Something just came out of this hole. Where the fuck is the penis on this thing? Once these kinks get ironed out, I'm going to be the number one name in three penis wine, five penis wine, and the all-new ultra-premium nine penis wine. If you drink nine penis wine, you will not stop fucking. Do not take a long car trip with your family. Trust me. Only the most exclusive three penis wines have the taco label. All penis, no balls. If you don't believe me, ask my lawyer. So we're clear, Taco. Reading this disclaimer does not make me your lawyer, okay? Three penis or any number of penis wine is not guaranteed to enhance virility or increase sexual performance. Although I did slug a bottle of this and just plowed the snot out of my wife. It was monumental stuff. Side effects can include dizziness, fuzzy teeth, and for like a week I smelled meat even when meat wasn't there. Are we done here? Can I get my bottle of Canadian Xanax now? Not until you say the slogan. Come on. Hey, guys. Take a sip and feel three penises inside of you. Okay, that is literally the gayest thing I've ever heard. Not gay. Good night. Got out of a magazine. Gentlemen. All right. Sh- shut this crap. Are you kidding me, for Christ's sake? I mean, good God, with that sick ass. <laughs> it's sick. It's sick. That was the sickest advertisement I've heard, for Christ's sake. What in the hell was that? What in the goddamn hell was that? Who was that? And why? Why? Why would anybody even make that? Why would they waste time out of their life to make something like that? Why? Why? Oh, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, that's sick, man. It's gross. But bleh. Freaking three, five, six, seven, and nine penis wine? What the hell does that mean? Oh, my God. Give me the freaking mic. Give me the freaking Oh, Jesus Christ, man. This is gross, man. You guys are getting more and more sick 
as time goes by. You understand this, right? You guys are getting more and more filthy, disgusting, pathetic. I mean, good God. Good God. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. I got you, my girl, off for Christmas. Only a wife who ain't with this one will do. Don't want to blow up doll. No flesh like Lyra Plus. I want the darky makara with boobies I can smash. I want the darky makara for Christmas. I don't think Lauren Faust will mind to you. Now has the won't to prove my pillowcase design. But keep the party printing means the dashy will be mine. I can see me now on Christmas morning creeping up the stairs. Oh, what joy uh, and it, 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 Shut this crap. What, where are y'all finding this garbage? In what part of the dark goddamn internet are you finding this sick crap? I mean, good God, man. Anonymous radio goddamn graffiti. But I'm not actually having sex with kids. I just approve of pedophilia. What is... It's bad enough that you think it should be legal. There's a difference. Consensual incest, sure. Oh my god. Like, okay, Nick, to say that again. Do you what? condone consensual incest? I I just said that. You already have it recorded. Why do you want me to say it again? Just so that I can confirm it. <sighs> yes, yes I do. Or yes I did. All right, that, yeah, I, I don't know where you're getting these conversations from, but that's that's just sick. All right, that's just freaking sick. Anonymous radio graffiti. You assholes, I don't know why you keep insisting on this. I don't know what. You people are idiots. I am not a cripple, idiot. Good God. 816 Radio Graffiti. Go, stop picking up the phone when I'm calling. I'm trying to talk to the engineer. Put him on. Now shut up, you fruit bowl. All right, shut your ass. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. And I hate to keep fucking my son here, but... That's right, that's right. Squeal! Squeal like a pig, boy! Squeal like a pig, boy! You, 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 you son of a... That's it! That's it! You son of a bitch! I'm tired of you doing these kinds of sick-ass slices about my family! I'm tired of it! I'm sick and tired of it! You people are sick, you're twisted, there's something wrong with your head! There's something wrong inside your head. I'm tired of it, man. I'm, I'm so tired. I'm tired of this crap, man. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Oh, goddamn mic, for Christ's sake, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm tired of this crap. All right? I mean, I'm shooting pearls to you morons, man. Do you understand that? During this first hour, during the markets, I'm giving you millions of dollars of information. Instead, you stupid, pathetic waste of human life decide that you want to go troll and go do this. And, hey, look at me. I'm doing this. And, <laughs> and then you wonder why your life is pathetic. Then you wonder why no one wants to play with your private parts. Then you wonder why you have no friends. Then you wonder why your mother talks to you in such a sarcastic, condescending manner because you're a pathetic waste of life. Do you understand that? You are a pathetic waste of life. A pathetic waste of life. Jesus Christ, man. There's like eight minutes left in this broadcast anyway, for Christ's sake. Oh, son of a bitch. You people are pissing me off, man. I'm telling you. Now, you know, now I'm giving you idiots three hours Three hours of my life, a little appreciation 
would be appreciated, you sons of bitches, all right? Over three hours of my life. Jesus Christ. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Sucked his eyebrows on the way, shaved his legs, and then he was a sheep. Said, Hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. Said, Hey, honey, take a walk on the wild side. And she was coming in a little co host. In the back room, he was the real talent. But he never lost his head. Even when given ghost, Teddy said, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. He said, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. And the engineer says, You son of a bitch! Yeah. You son of a bitch! Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me with that stupid song! You've got to be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! Good God! I mean, give me a break, man! I mean, Lou Reed mixing me with that transsexual song? That song's about a transsexual! You understand that? That song is about a goddamn tranny. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, you know, I'm glad we're almost done with this show. You understand that? I'm glad. I'm glad. Give me the goddamn mic. I'm glad we're almost done with this show, for Christ's sake. I'm telling you, I don't know how much. I mean, you guys are bastards, man. You're freaking bastards. Napa Auto Parts wants to know, what makes today's new cars so smart? Is it the questionably useful Wi-Fi connectivity? Could it be the giant, confusing touchscreens you should probably stop playing with while driving? Or perhaps voice-activated everything that never seems to listen very well? The answer, of course, is... None of the above. Click the banner to see the smartest car available today. Jesus Christ, man. I'm only going to take a couple more. We got five minutes left, man. I, I just... <sighs> Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Go to the shower, guy. Let's take the penis wine together in my shower. Oh, my... Oh, Jesus Christ, shower guy, enough of this crap, enough of this crap. I mean, what do we have here? We had, we had a tranny tub, a tub tranny, we had the Japanese toilet guy, we have shower guy, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Anonymous radio goddamn graffiti. No, shut up, shut up, shut your mouth, all right? Anonymous, Radio Graffiti. Anito Gostini, Radio Graffiti. Well, you know, I'm one of those people that just kind of believes in being old-fashioned. You know, I like uh, I like sitting at home and, uh, you know, cooking a meal and watching Netflix. Are you married? No, no, I'm not married at all. I'm just, I'm just kind of one of those lost souls. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, what are, you, are you trying to allude that I'm some kind of an emo bastard or something? Is that what you're trying to allude to there, you scumbag? Jesus Christ. We got 423 Radio Graffiti. 
Yeah, get that. Some no personality having fruit bowl. How about anonymous radio graffiti? I think it's about time. You know what the time is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go ahead and take it from the top. You must. <laughs> Oh, oh, my God. Shut, shut up with that stupid anime crap. Shut up. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. Hey, Ghost, this is Journal Guy. Would you like to come to Tub Guy's house and have an orgy with the Bathroom Brothers? It would be totally fun and legit. Oh, my. Shut up, for Christ's sake. Enough of these stupid trolls. Enough! Anonymous radio goddamn graffiti. Ghost, why do you let these trolls get you? I mean, come on. Do what Shower Guy and I do. Just rub some soap on them. Your soap. It'll be totally legit. Oh. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Good God, how many of these fruity McFaggins are there out here, for Christ's sake? Anonymous radio graffiti. Oh, Jesus Christ, not these idiots. Anonymous radio graffiti. I sit down when I pee. There's nothing that crazy about me. I'm just taking a whiz. Mind your own biz. Why is everybody always staring at me? Hey, bro, I gotta go. Let me through. I gotta go, number two. No can do. I'm taking the pee. Sitting on the loo, having a good long week. Are you sitting down? I'm sitting down. And you're not making brown? I'm not making brown. Are you making iced tea? Just lemonade. But are you sitting down? I'm sitting down. Why don't you stand like a regular man? Then you can pee in the urinal can. If you really want to know why I'm sitting strong, I just can't stand touching my dog. Ah, Jesus Christ. You know what? I've I've had about enough of this. All right, I'm, I'm serious. I'm done. Stick a fork in me, for Christ's sake. This is such a goddamn bathhouse Thursday. It's it's smelling up the whole place like butt crack. All right? I'm sick and tired of this crap. I'm done with this crap. Anyway, folks, once again, uh, I'm going to be here tomorrow for Baller Friday. Okay, I hope that you're here tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Show. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? And uh, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter, all right? Follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And I'd like to remind everybody once again that you have a limited amount of time to purchase your autograph of yours truly or the engineer. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, you can type into your browser right now, ghost.market. That's ghost.market. The autographs will be pulled this Saturday evening. So get them while you can. Get them while they're hot. And as far as the autograph cans are concerned, give it about a week, okay? We're still looking for a solution to make the signature look more presentable on the can. So give us a week, a week and a half. We're going to put the cans on sale, so on and so forth, okay? Once again, ghost.market to go buy the autographs. They will be pulled down this Saturday. Anyway, I shall see you tomorrow for Baller Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. You better be here, 4 p.m. for Baller Friday.